Trustee Young? Here. Supervisor Denver? Here. Uh, Trustee Bowles had a family emergency. Everybody's sick down in Indianapolis. We have to take care of the baby. So there was nobody to take care of it. The babysitter was even sick. So she was like, okay, I'll be there. All right, let's stand and do the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
within our budget. Uh, it's close, but I made it. So that's all. Now I've got to start thinking about spring, start looking at roads. We're going to, have to start paving. we got to keep our eyes on the roads in case there's any potholes come up, which is a real problem this year with all the frost. Uh, we've had a lot of, a lot of, uh, the one bridge out here by Kedzie, one guy called me up and said, I think that bridge is, is settling down. It's so bumpy. I said, no, that's frost on each end even the road up there. Yeah. So uh, uh, all the bridges around here did that. When we were plowing snow on the end, of, end here, every time we came to a bridge, we literally had to slam on the brakes and literally stop because otherwise the plow just flew up. So uh, it got kind of rough. Were you looking to pave the remainder of Heatherbrook? Yep. <coughs> OK. Yep. Dave, how much, how much salt did you use? Uh, I've used well over 800 tons. 800. Yeah. Yeah. So you had no difficulty. You said they kept delivering, so you had no difficulty obtaining this. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. But I had the budget. I never cut the budget back, see. Mm -hmm. I kept the dollars there. So I could use a lot of, a lot of communities didn't have, the, didn't have the dollars. And they ran out. Yeah. That's why I asked. Yeah. I still got that. The shed's still about half full. Wow. Mm -hmm. So. How do you plan on filling those potholes? Well, we use we use a pothole patch. Pothole. Yeah, yeah, cold, cold, cold mix. You don't contract; you keep the oh, yeah. house workers. Yeah. Okay. 
Is that the standard way for the most part homes? Yeah, pretty well is, yeah. There's, you, can, you can use a hot mix. The county down here has got a little, a little thing that they put it in and heats up. It's got two wheels on it, they pull it behind, they go to the pothole and it's hot. They throw it in there and roll it out. Well, the reason I ask is that that University Park was just north of the main entrance of Rebel State. From the railroad tracks east yeah. to the golf course is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Bring, it, bring, it, bring in the grinder. Bring in the grinder, grind it up. Well, it's not hot, no. Okay. no, I know that. I know but that. We are getting calls constantly yeah. asking you know, whose road is it. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can say it's University Park Road. That's right. It's terrible. I'm afraid I need to go down the road. Yeah. But these roads are taking a real, real rough this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but lane is bad. I mean, it's just all bad. Yep. So that's it. Okay, nothing else? Thank you. And how's the report? Okay. We began the homestead exemption review process. Um, we actually completed it now. Um, our workshops are starting um, this month on um, March 27th at 5.30 will be the first one of the year. We're reviewing documents for state appeals to go to the county. More visits to the county and assessors' uh, locations will be required this year. Uh, travel may increase. Assessors are the only township elected official who has to test for certification in order to run for office and must satisfy the continuing education credits to rerun. And um, Ms. Hurd and myself will be attending the spring conference in Bloomington uh, this coming week. On um, from the 24th to the 26th to take continuing ed classes. Thank you very much. All right, and I just wanted to reiterate some of the other uh, tasks that the assessors uh, do. I know I do publish it in the in the uh, newsletter from time to time, but it is a, an ex has been an extend extended amount of uh, work that goes on in the assessor's office probably from, you know, maybe 10 or 12 years ago when uh, it was just, uh, uh, you know, nothing automated in there. Okay, but what, what we do at the assessor's office, myself and my staff, um, and, but I'm the manager of the leader of those efforts, is analyze and plan for uh, appeals, when we have to do reductions for the assessment or increases whenever that happens. I don't know when that may be. Uh, but we do have to do research, continue to understand the economy, if how the values of homes are there's you know, gotten to a point where they're stopped, but they've been dropping for some time. Uh, we do serve as a mass uh, uh, appraisers, not as an individual appraiser, but as mass appraisers to determine the values of homes. When we do reduce, we have to use some kind of uh, method for reduction. And it's in the past, this space has been, been based on sales, uh, but a lot of the sales have been foreclosure short sales. So uh, <clears throat> with the uh, guidance from the, the state and county, we come up with a factor amount that we can overall do for the county. <coughs> and we look at the neighborhood and say which ones need more or less than the other. <clears throat> so we're evaluating uh, during that time, we're also evaluating during the field time. Uh, as we do ongoing workshops and, and just training, uh, educating the taxpayers as well as the elected officials when they can come to our workshop. And again, I want to invite you all to come. This next one is the 27th. I'd like to see some of you out there uh, sometime. I know Trustee Brown comes. Thank you. Good job. Uh, but it's a lot of information that's shared, and I think it can help you understand, as well as the taxpayers, how the, uh, when the assessments go down and the uh, rates go up, and they pretty much still say, pay the same bill, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and then you also see that when you see when your budget is submitted or your uh, levy is submitted, that you, you still end up getting more dollars, even though the assessment is going down. Uh, we do service public relations for people. We build and record the taxpayers with the, we service a lot of seniors, we service other taxpayers. Um, <clears throat> So we're constantly managing and coordinating uh, functions 
as well with other taxing bodies uh, like the villages, uh, the counties, the state. <clears throat> Um, and then we managed to, we, we have since, since uh, the last assessor was in office, um, <coughs> it was expanded to have included a database, a uh, website, and networking uh, activity that has really uh, been a good thing for helping give better information to the public, but that's added responsibility that the assessor's office has. That's a big thing. It's a big thing. Uh, and then, in a way, legal representative, I have to say that, I'm not trying to say I'm a lawyer's lawyer, but when we have to go to these appeals, we have to provide support. We have to provide the uh, uh, support and evidence, is what they call it, uh, to continue to either keep, uh, uh, like most of the industrial parts and, and that, when they, when they request a reduction, they're not talking about a few hundred. They're not talking about a few thousand. They're talking about millions. And so I have to really do a lot to get prepared for that. And so uh, along those lines, too, is one of the things I have been asking, I did ask for last month, is to have the you know, Crestville Legal Council to help in some of those issues. And then as a politician, of course, always trying to serve the constituents. Uh, and uh, so I'm just, I just want people to know that it's not just because we have office hours that are part-time, our, our responsibilities and our functions are great. It's not, it's not defined by the number of houses that the office is open. That's all I want to know. So uh, I did request uh, an opinion from the attorney. I'm sure he'll go with that, I guess he will, um, in regards to uh, the ordinance that was describing legal. I'm not going to go into my details, but he did give me a response. <coughs> There was a lot of other information in there, and I guess because of the research, it did take a while to get that to me. Um, and then I was just wondering about the expenses when we get to it, about the attorney that I had counseled with you know, prior to see if that would be honored. And then other than that, I'd just like to thank the residents for coming out. And, um, I look forward to having you know, some further comments when we get to the budget. What time? What time is there? Which time? It's 5.30 to 6.30. 5.30 to 6.30. And it's also in the newsletter. Okay. <coughs> Can I? On the website. On the website? Yeah. I'll try to get this on the school district website. Okay. I'll go to the break. Okay. Yeah, because we've got three months of your schedule. The March, the May, and then uh, August. Okay. Do you have those dates, too? Mm -hmm. It's in the news. It's in the news. <laughs> okay. I'll go back to the newsletter. Or, or online. It's online. I think we got it on our calendar, right? Don't you? All of them? Right. We got it on our, you know, on the, our website. Yeah, it's on the assessment website. Okay. I'll put it in the bed if it's okay with you. Mm -hmm. uh, can, I, can I task you with one more endeavor, so to speak? Uh -huh. <laughs> How do you feel about coming periodically <coughs> to the school district, uh, our regular meetings? And just speak, kind of give an update. I don't know how I've done it. You twice already. So they, yeah. they just love that. We yeah. never had that before. Okay. So you would mind doing that? No. Okay. Thanks. Please give me the information. No. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, I, this month I did, um, uh, as the assessor indicates, there were a couple of. Uh, there was one question for an opinion. The other uh, came up uh, with more or less from the assessor. there was a request for an opinion uh, from the assessor with respect to, to the interpretation, meaning, or whatever, of the ordinance that the uh, prior, uh, a prior board had actually passed uh, regarding the authority of any township officer separate council. Um, I've uh, prepared, and I think you all have yeah, well, we a copy of the, uh, of the letter which I did prepare, which kind of goes through it through a little bit. Um, in, in short, uh, a couple of the high points, I suppose, if you'd like to look at that. Um, 
is that uh, regardless of the origins the state law provides that the, uh, when the board chooses an attorney, chosen by the supervisor, uh, approved by the board, that that attorney is the attorney for the township. Not the attorney for any individual officers, but is, is the, uh, the attorney for the township, uh, all of the township officers. Um, the issue uh, comes up um, uh, a little bit uh, as to if there are any exceptions to that. So, I, so I think I think the law, in that sense, to that point, is pretty clear that when the, when the township chooses an attorney, that attorney is for the township, not for any individual trustees, not for them. Um, there are a couple situations, and there's a, there a bit of an exception for the highway commissioner. Um, there are some special provisions for the highway commissioner which allows for the highway commissioner to have a, a separate attorney. Uh, that's historically a time been the case. There's an exception to that, uh, which has been for the, for the highway commissioner, that exception has been drawn in by the statute. For the rest of the board uh, members, that exception has been drawn in by case law. Because as I try to describe, and sometimes people don't exactly understand how the law works, and it is kind of strange, I suppose, to some degree. The source of law that controls what you can do comes from two sources. One, it comes from statutes. It comes from the law. Uh, that is passed by the legislature, various rules and, and, and that sort of thing. And it also comes from case law decisions, it's called precedent sometimes, uh, where court decisions are made which take those statutes and interpret what they mean. Uh, and that's called precedent, and it's a, big, it's a major part of the law. Um, and so with respect to the issue of exceptions for, to the rule for the uh, attorney representing the, all the officers, the case law has drawn in an exception that already existed for the Highway Commissioner, but that the case law draws in the exception that if there is a conflict of interest uh, between a township officer and the, uh, the township itself, that in those cases, uh, the township officer should be able to hire separate counsel, because in most of those cases, township attorney is representing the township, not the individual officer. And so there's a conflict there, uh, a conflict can follow. And so in those cases, uh, the, the township officer is entitled to hire their own, uh, or his or her own, uh, attorney. Now I went through at length uh, going through the case law because that's really where the exception comes in with respect to township officers other than highway commission. Highway Commissioner, there's a special statute that deals with that. But if you go through the cases which I've cited uh, in there, I, and I realize you know you're not you're not an attorney, so I, I, I try to approach this a little bit differently than maybe if I was filing this in front of a you know the appellate court or something. <clears throat> so I gave you some of the facts to try to explain how these things come up a little bit because there's a lot of times they're actually pretty interesting fact situations that come up. Um, but in short. The, the exceptions that are drawn in by the case law come up in cases where there's litigation. Where there's been a lawsuit filed either by the township board against the officer or where it's come up where the township officer has sued the board. And in those cases, the law says that the officer, since the, the, the township attorney is represented by the board, the township officer is entitled to hire uh, their own attorney. Now, um, and so all the cases that I cite, except for one, are come up in that situation. So the Wayne Township Board case uh, dealt with the township supervisor where there was a lawsuit between the town board against the supervisor because the township supervisor would produce some records. Uh, the Griffiths versus Pembroke Township case, which is out of the third district, which is actually our district uh, here in Will County. Uh, where there was an issue by the assessor, the assessor involved, where the assessor had run the office out of her own, her own home, and the township had formulated a new board, had formed, bought a new town hall, 
and they wanted the assessor to move into the town hall, so there's litigation there. Yeah, there are actually some pretty interesting facts about in these cases. Um, yeah. Um, uh, and then there was, and those, so those were all litigation. The courts in those cases said, yeah, the, the township officer is going to have to be able to have their own attorney because the township attorney is representing the other side. Okay, it makes some sense. Uh, the Franks case, which is the case I cited on page three, which came out of uh, Henry County, involved the highway commissioner. Now, the only thing that makes that case a little confusion, confusing is that that case arose before the statute actually put into it that the highway commissioner, in its case of conflict, can hire his own attorney. When the Franks case was decided, that was not the law, so it was the same for all officers at the time. And what the court decided there, the, the attorney, there was no litigation at the time that was involved. The, the township, the attorney that was hired by the township officer, in that case the highway commissioner, uh, indicated on the bill that he, he was billing for attending township meetings, preparing legal opinions, conducting correspondence, and advising the highway commissioner in his official capacity. Court ruled highway commissioner didn't have authority to hire an attorney to uh, to represent him in that case. There was no litigation involved in that case at that time. And so I think that is the, actually the case which is closest to I think, our situation is right here, um, where there is no litigation. You know, if there's litigation that arises, okay, it's, it's a different, could be a different ballgame. But there is no case that I find, and there's no statute for sure, that says that a, any township officer, be it the assessor in this case or any other township officer, can charge the township, and go out and hire a separate counsel of their own and ch charge the township for the services of that attorney when there's not on paper what amounts to a litigation type conflict. Yeah, there might be a disagreement. Matter of fact, if you follow this argument through, you know, there's, there's four people on this board. Let's say that the board doesn't vote unanimously on something. There's a disagreement. One board member votes one way and, and doesn't like it. Does that mean that they can bring in their own attorney to argue their point in front of this board just because there's a disagreement? No. The cases seem to say that this conflict has got to arise to something more than just not agreeing on things. There's got to be some litigation where there's where one side is going to be at a distinct disadvantage because they're not going to have the attorney because the attorney is representing the other side. Um, now, the ordinance that was passed uh, back in 2006, I really don't know exactly what the, what the, the dispute was back then. I'm going to kind of guess I might have dealt with the high sure, but, uh, you know, but not, not having sat on this board at the time, I'm not sure what the issue was. So the, the ordinance that was passed back in 2006 I think if, if you read that, that ordinance and you read the cases that I cited, there's a lot of similarities in there. So my guess is they probably had gone through uh, the case law, that same case law that I went through, and it tries to more clearly distinguish the situations uh, in a concrete fashion as to when the officers can break and hire their own uh, attorney. The key provision, which I think ties in with the question that was specifically asked by the assessor, you know, deals with, okay, when is there enough of a conflict that I get my own attorney? Okay, and what the ordinance that was passed back in 2006 basically said, and, you know, we might want to look at that, uh, um, as far as the language, I cited in my, uh, in my letter, um, that it's, the issue of whether there's a conflict is for the township board to decide. So if, uh, and again, I, I make the point in my letter to say, the mere fact that there's a disagreement, as I read the case law, and as I read the statutes, doesn't say that means that everybody can go out and get their lawyers. Uh, if, if any officer here thinks that I need to have my own attorney, there's a conflict of interest, then what this says is, if in the opinion of the majority of the township board, in consultation with the township attorney, the matter raised has created a genuine conflict of interest, the township board shall authorize the appointment of a separate legal counsel as warranted. 
So I, I think what that statute is saying, in light of the case law that I cited to you, in light of the statute that I cited to you, uh, if, it, if, if there is litigation involved, I don't think the township board would have any choice. The township board would have to allow for appointment of additional uh, separate council. If there is no litigation involved, then I think it's up to the town board to decide, okay, is this the kind of thing that we want to, that we think is legitimate for the township officer, assessor, or whoever, to be able to get their own attorney. Uh, and you know, there's been no there's been no action by this board that authorized the separate attorney. There is no litigation that's currently going on. And so my opinion is that there is no entitlement to a separate counsel for any town, any of the township officers at this point in time. <coughs> when you say litigation, for example, Assessor Heard said that this was last month at our last meeting that she may be involved with some kind of appeals that requires legal counsel to represent the township. Is that determined at that time to be considered litigation? No, no because okay. when I'm talking about litigation, I'm talking about litigation that's between the township officer and the township. Because that's where the conflict comes in, because the township attorney is usually going to be representing the township board mm -hmm. or the township against that officer. Mm -hmm. What the assessor is talking about is a situation where there are appeals from assessments either from the board of review, the property tax appeals board, mm -hmm. wherever. There's no conflict with the township board. She's representing. She's representing the township. So that's mm -hmm. not the kind of litigation that I'm talking about. Litigation's got to be where there's going to be a distinct disadvantage, in this case, I'm pointing at the assessor because this, yeah. that's where the issue comes That's where our previous <laughs> assessor sued. That's an example of a situation where, where Ms. Barefoot okay. filed a lawsuit. Yeah. There, was, there was litigation involved there. Uh, and so the township attorney was representing the township board. And so therefore, uh, if, that, if that kind of case came up, mm -hmm. I would sit here and tell you that under that ordinance, mm -hmm. You know, I, I think you would have to appoint or allow for the appointment of a separate attorney. Do we pay? Do the township pay it would for be that up person? To the, the judge. Tell yeah, the that. judge would right. tell you. Right. But, you know, if it was something that mm -hmm. they considered it was inconsequential mm -hmm. and that they shouldn't have sued the board, mm -hmm. then the judge may very well say that, you know, whoever sues has to pay. I mean, they don't always, I mean, they might say, we have to pay, too, just to get it over with. But, Very well. you know, we don't know. It depends on what the judge says. But also, when talking with Joe on this matter of hearings, he has represented, you know, other townships at assessor hearing processes. And then he's well, I, have, I, I haven't stopped it. I haven't actually sure it was the township. I've represented the property staff, the property owners. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But he, <laughs> and and then, the he has represented the here, you know, and he feels yeah. very comfortable that, you know, in doing so for the township. So he does not feel that that would be a problem at all. So. Now, Joe, when you use your case studies, are you only soliciting or seeking case studies here in Illinois? Yes. Okay. Is that required? Can you use case studies outside? You can use, you can use, typically for authority, you, if you can't find case law in Illinois, you can go outside of the, the state and look for authority. Okay. Uh, and the reason for doing that is that you can show that there's a trend of the law in other states that may be inconsist inconsistent with Illinois, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, but typically, if there's Illinois authority, which I think there is, I mean, there's, there's about four or five cases that, uh, that you know, deal with, with this, Kind of an issue, so I wouldn't typically go outside. Well, the state. State. Yeah. Okay. Can I add one thing? Because I know you weren't here last month when, when right. it was discussed. It was this came about when I requested an increase in the budget line item for attorneys. And at that time, I didn't even have a copy of this uh, ordinance. I, this was something that came up during the meeting. And it was, you know, it was said then, and I had already had, you know, some counsel already. Uh, but what I want to be clear, which I guess you have now, is said, said, what is a genuine conflict of interest? So you're saying basically it's litigation. Yeah, I, I, right. think, I, think, I think the conflict of interest, is, in the one case I cited here kind of talks about the Illinois, for, for, for attorneys, the, the governing body is the, the uh, Registration Disciplinary Committee. They, they publish rules about uh, conflicts of interest, stuff like that, between clients. Mm -hmm. and, and what these cases get at is that the 
reason for the conflict is because the, the township attorney is representing the other side. Okay. And so that's why there's finding a conflict of interest. Okay. Um, I mean, actually, the ordinance goes a little further than that. Because the ordinance, the, uh, the Pony Township ordinance, doesn't specifically require that it be litigation. It right. requires, it does. in cases that are not litigation, okay, the board can, can, if it decides, to go beyond what the case law would say. And that's why I asked you, because it wasn't very clear. I'm but sorry. again, it wasn't the, the counsel that I had before was not for litigation, wasn't for a conflict with the board or anything. And uh, when it was introduced to me then, that it was already after I had got Except for the fact that a year or two ago when we were discussing car problems, uh -huh. I gave you and everybody on this board a copy of that policy. And so it was introduced to you in the last year or two. So you okay. had it, whether you when actually we read through it. Car? You yeah, when, when were the people? meetings we had here? Everybody here was given a copy. Everybody got a copy. Yes. Yeah, so this is not everybody the first was time we were that given it, and I had copies have seen this. Right. It wasn't a new thing. It's, it's not. <clears throat> Get a copy of the policy yes, yes. For the yes. Well, it was actually it was given out because it was discussing about, uh, you know, could you go further with lawsuits? And I dragged it out and said, because of that, here is this policy, and everybody has a copy. I don't hear about that. I don't know who has done it, but just following through the second thing, there was a second issue that came up, um, which was the uh, what I title on my letter here, uh, Assessor's Request for Additional Compensation, um, which I, uh, there was also, the, the issue came up with respect to the submission of a, uh, a bill by the assessor for um, some uh, website work, I think it was, I would call it. Um, and um, the, the, I think that the, the critical point with respect to that issue is, is the Illinois Constitution, which provides that an increase or decrease in the salary of an elected officer of any unit of local government shall not take effect during the term for which that officer is elected. And then I go on to cite, and this is a unit of local government, township, sorry. There's also provision in the uh, Local Government Officer Compensation Act, which provides that, uh, notwithstanding any other law to the contrary, the compensation of elected officers of school districts and units of local government, including home rule units, which were not, which compensation is to be fixed by that school district or unit of local government shall be fixed at least 180 days before the beginning of the terms of the officers whose compensation is to be fixed. Uh, as you know, uh, in 2012, I think, 2012, I guess more did, yeah, was when the uh, the issue of compensation was last uh, addressed. And I, that, there were no changes at that time. And I think the last time that the compensation actually, as a matter of fact, I think the four years before that, I don't think it was changed either. I think before that, it was actually changed. So, um, you know, no, we, have, we have been getting big raises here. I noticed that. <laughs> I noticed that. Okay. Um, and uh, so what we have here is, and I realize it's, I, I realize that there could be the argument here that, well, this would, could be something that I could contract out rather than contracting it out. I'm doing it, you know, we're doing it ourselves within the assessor's office by the assessor. The problem is that that effectively is an increase in compensation for the assessor, no matter how you want to cut it, or how you want to describe it. I mean, that's what it is. And uh, I cite there's, a, there's an old um, axiom in the law, which uh, goes back to the old common law, which uh, says, you can, see, you can see that by how old the cases that I cite. Uh, it says, in the law, a person can't do indirectly what they could not do directly. Um, and effectively, that's what we have here, that whether it's, and it's whether it's being done under the name of the, the company or whether it's being done under the name of the assessor. Um, I mean, it still cuts the same way. Uh, it still amounts to an increase in the, the compensation that's paid to the assessor. I will admit, I did call somebody at uh, TOI, it's actually their education director down there that I spoke to. 
you know, just to, because frankly, you see, I don't really cite any cases in this one. I like the other opinion where there's a bunch of cases I cite. This issue has not really come up where I found a lot of case law, um, other than the citations I just mentioned for the uh, old Manson law. And actually, he went further than, I think he was trying to make a point, but to say that a township officer, you know, if, if it would be the assessor, if the assessor gets paid something extra for shoveling snow, that's against the rule. <laughs> because it's extra compensation. The issue is, when you're elected, there's a set compensation. It's a matter of record where this is what the salary is. And this is what, you know, any compensation that's going to be paid to that township officer in excess of what that township officer salary was when, prior to the time they were elected, would be a violation. Now, there, there was a citation, or a, a mention of a, the statute. There's a, in the Revenue Act of uh, Illinois, there is a, uh, a provision uh, that deals with the, uh, it's 2-75, I thought I folded it. Yeah, 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 well, that's the thing. I want to read you exactly. That's section 2-75 of the Revenue Act says, when compensation of a township or multi-township assessor or his or her deputy is based upon the time actually employed in the making of assessments, the assessor and deputies shall make an affidavit of the time so employed. Payments of the compensation and expenses under the sections shall be paid out of the township or multi-township treasury. So okay, you know, looking at the argument, well, can we somehow fall under that, that that allows for additional compensation under that statute? I think the answer is no. And the, the reason the answer is no is because that section, that 2-75, what compensation of the township or multi-township assessor or his or her deputy is based upon the time actually employed in the making of assessments. My understanding from speaking of people, from some people at the township, uh, TOI office is that I guess in small, some very small townships, there are situations where the, where the assessors are actually they actually bill by their time and by their cases that they do. I guess because they probably don't have a lot of activity or whatever. Uh, that's not how how Moni does it. Moni does it by a salary, and that's the salary that, uh, that is set before the, the assessors employed. Can't go up, can't go down. Uh, and uh, so you think <coughs> if she the tax assessor and the deputy assessor were both inundated with work, excusing a hypothetical situation. And they were putting in extra hours because there's no set hours per se that the assessor work they have hours set for the office, I guess. They can do a lot of work off the clock, so to speak. But but if it comes to a point where they have work over their head. You're saying that the thing to do to get the work done is to hire a contractor for people that has that have a skill set to do it. Is that what you're saying? Or we need the work. We need the work. Mm -hmm. Because it used to have it. That's how it used to be done. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Sandra. Keith Bray, who used to was hired to, well, for Nancy Martha, mm -hmm. he was doing a lot of computer inputting. Is that correct? It was and, Gail at first, okay. and then of course when Nancy left home, Keith stayed. He took on right. a lot of it. And then when Keith told you that he was going to quit, you brought in the other Keith, and mm -hmm. Keith. Right. No, and, not for the, no, no. Well, like you brought in, you brought in somebody to train, and Keith was training. Keith Ray was training them to take over. Keith then, Ray is still continues to. Well, now he is, but the the purpose of my understanding at the time that Keith Heard was hired was that he was hired to take over the duties of Keith Ray because Keith Ray was moving as an inspector, okay. not as the web. Right. And that and <coughs> that no, so no, so apparently he wasn't trained. So then when Keith Ray left. Then he continued to be hired as an outside consultant, then to do the inputs. Right. But if that's no longer going to happen, then that can be if she can hire somebody, okay. or give somebody else in her office, or train somebody who is in her office, and pay them the salary just like they used to do with Keith Ray. 
But to your question, you said if in the case where you know the workload increases and everything, it still increases on me, right. even if I have someone else, because I do have to train them if if I am able to train them, or I have to add extra time to get to make sure the job gets done. I'm still responsible, even if I don't have anybody. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm still responsible. Yes. And and so I, I do end up working extra hours. Right. And what we're not paid by the hour. It's just like, and I put in so many hours. And I definitely not And that's why I was trying to <laughs> allude to that uh, Joe can kind of use two different scenarios. The law is stated there. You were saying I'd pretty say much I'd for the smaller townships. My understanding is not on I don't know if any of the two, but that's what they told me the TOI. Okay. And I was just saying, where does the buck stop, so to speak? When it comes to workload, well, it's yes. you know, like not money so far. That's, that's, that's the way it is. I mean, it, 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 seems, job. it seems to me the choices <laughs> are you know, assessor salary is frozen. Okay. So, so if if the if there is too much work, I, I'm not saying that the assessor is not sure. under over overworked. Sure. I'm not saying that. Sure. Yeah. But what, but I, what, I, I, what I'm saying is sir. that if if her office is overworked, the choices would be one would be contracting out, or it would be the employee situation. You know, room to get another employee or something, or if you think, and of course the other choice is if you think that the, if if you think the salary is low, well then what you need to do is adjust the salary before the next term. Okay. Okay, but it is true though that this the workload in this office has tripled from when the last time that there, the salary was increased to this office. And I'm not saying that. Yes. And that's all I'm saying. And so you know, you can say right now, if you still want to keep it at that, that you don't really have no concern if, 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 if the assessor has more of a workload. That's basically it. But I wanted to say this too, Joe. You were saying that it should be no increase, no more decrease. Correct. And so what I had noticed too is that when the uh, prior assessor had this salary, she also had an, an, an automobile. And there was no policy that said that she must use her personal vehicle for the do the work of the township. Now in essence, when that when that policy is applied to me, I'm getting a decrease because now I've got to take more out of the, the salary that I have that the same assessor had with the car to make sure I can provide for the vehicle. But I don't see, I, I think the difference would be, I don't see that you're getting a decrease during your term. Now, you may be getting a, you may be a decrease from the other township assessor who was in the office previously, but I don't think there was a change during your term that actually reduces your income. Yeah, or effectively reduces your This is the second term. The first term is when the change happened. It was during my term. That's when the policy was created. That's when it was required that I have to provide the, the automobile for the office. No, I understand. And, and, but the last assessor that had the same salary, okay, no increase, but she did have an automobile that she did not have to provide herself, that she did not have to take from her set salary. I understand that. The, the difference is that that reduction, which you're, which you're viewing as a reduction in, in your income because of not having the car, that was in place when you took office this time. And so it didn't happen during the term of this office. I, know, I didn't say it during the term of this office, but this term for me just started but that's what in we're January. Addressing. We're, addressing, we're addressing, you said, and you said correctly, yeah. that there, can't be, there cannot be a decrease during the term of your office. And that's my first term I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It okay. actually was a decrease during that first term. And not only that, the money that was there in the budget for a lease vehicle was denied to me. But that's over and done with, and when you ran again for the second term, you knew the protocol, and you knew that. So it's not like there's any decrease this term because you I, I'm not talking about this term, we're talking about when it actually occurred. Last we're not term. talking about that term, we're talking You're about You're not talking term. about what I am. And so I'm saying that that's This is the attorney's... I know, I know, but when he was saying that it could not, in, in any term, be increased, or decrease. I'm telling you, that's what happened the last term. It was definitely a decrease. It was not a salary decrease. It was a, a difference in, in, in benefits. Okay. And there's no decrease okay. because you are paying 56 cents per mile, which is pretty hefty. And okay. it's, it's very applicable to all the other state offices and, and county offices. Okay. That are so I contend that adding, the, submitting an invoice, which everything that gets paid through the office is submitted through an invoice, 
which I, I don't like really that the way it was stated as unauthorized. You know, that word just used when it's put a negative tone on it. But submitting an invoice for extra work is not increasing that salary. It does not increase the salary. Just like you said, not having to have a car, they don't decrease it. The, asking for a uh, pay for on an invoice is not increasing my salary. My salary is still 32. It's, it's an increase because it's extra paid to you, isn't it? Which Joe was addressing, we can't pay it. Well, okay, but okay. So the difference, the problem is, is that I don't have the approval of the board for it because you do do it. You've done it for the highway commissioner that you agree that he can pay part of his own budget to himself. So it's just the difference is not having the approval of the board for it. No, no. Two more to go. It was the uh, other board. They, they increased the highway commissioner's salary from forty-four thousand dollars a year. $54,000 a year, but that $10,000 was taken out of the highway commissioner's salary. Right. Other, all official salaries are taken out of the supervisor's salary. They made a special thing at that time mm -hmm. that, you know, because they wanted more salary and they didn't want to take it out of the supervisor's budget, they would take that $10,000 a year out of the highway commissioner's, but which was what they had to do. It was just approved by this board. It, wasn't and approved by it was just approved by this board. We, we, we this still board. approve that salary yes, every did. year, and that's how it's broken out. Yes, you did. We have 44 from the town fund, 10 from him. But it has nothing to do with what Sam was talking well, about. Well, it does it's have what something to do with it. Like I'm saying, any, the difference is it's, no it's approval from the board. No approval from the board. That's no it. It's 54000 Where it comes from is two separate accounts. It's not the same as what Sam was talking about. Well, it, it is. I'm just saying the lack is is not having the approval of the board because the approval was made for him, not just with this last but uh, board, was, but also in this board. But it was also made at the time we had to do it per Joe and per state statute. I agree. I agree. 180 days before I, the term I agree of I'm saying place. that you, I didn't say you didn't do it improperly. I'm just saying you did approve it. You did approve it. So okay. my issue is I don't get the approval. All right, let's move on. Um, Joe, did you have any more to say on that? Um, we we probably talk more when we're talking about later. Unless there's some questions. That was it. And let's talk those as we're going into the actual case cases. Okay. I just wanted to have one more thing to say on that one when he was talking about the litigation and that the case that you stated where the highway commissioner did not have before that time the approval to get a uh, legal uh, counsel and then it changed after that. Right. Uh, so I'm just saying that it could be that that's what has to be done and you would get, you know, something uh, approved. Well, I mean, but in that case it wasn't actually, the state statute actually changed where they, they, right. Right. they, they specifically said that in the event of a conflict of interest, the highway commissioner or the board can hire a uh, attorney for the highway no, no, it was saying that the, he has the right to hire an attorney even without conflict of interest. Um, the law has changed. Yes, that? Yeah, that's what but I'm saying. So the law changed. changed. Okay. okay. I saw that. Yeah, I, I kind of, at some point, I kind of pulled the highway commissioner discussion out of this because right. it just kind of confusing the issue. Right. Right. All right, let's move just, on. Just a point of clarification. The, the salaries that is indicated in attorney's union's budget, the March 17th. Those are the salaries that we have approved. There hasn't yes. been anything else. That's no right. That's all yeah. Okay, move on to new business. We need to set the agenda for the annual town meeting for April 8th, 2014. Um, is there a motion to approve the annual town meeting agenda? Second. 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 Any discussion? Uh, what time? Oh, 7.30. 7.30, and, but you must be here by 7.30 to be allowed to vote. So you must, and to come to be here, which means you sign in, then you have actual registrars that are here. Our, our Bobby sets it all up. He has registrars that you have to sign in and prove your registered voter. And at that time, then you're allowed in and given a sticker, and then you're allowed to vote. I mean, at 7.30, you can be in the building, you cannot vote. I think, <laughs> <laughs> think 715. All right, is there uh, no further than uh, roll we'll call, please? President Brown? Yes. 
Trustee Burgess? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. Supervisor Day? Yes. Uh, the next is the Township uh, Official uh, Torma has asked us to do a risk, risk management association loss control policy. And basically it's very, very standard, just saying that uh, uh, we take great pride in our ability to provide quality services to our residents in an effectual and safe manner. Accidents represent human suffering and damage to property, downgrade our human resources, and interfere with our ability to provide township services in an efficient manner. It is our sincere belief that injuries and property damage resulting from accidents are preventable through proper management of our resources. Loss prevention is everyone's responsibility. For this reason, all township officials are responsible for providing adequate resources and enthusiastic leadership to eliminate situation conditions which could cause improper employment practices, injury, and or property damage. All employees are expected to follow safe work methods and practices and to have uh, concern for the safety of their fellow workers. And so they want us to uh, uh, approve this and then they're asking for signatures of everybody. Is there a motion to approve this? Yeah, we the township, yeah, township loss control policy as presented by the formal request. So moved. By Louise. I'll second. Second by James. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. To the right never. Yes. I'm going to start passing this is what people can sign and then we can send it out and have David and Sandra sign it also. Okay. Um, purchase new copier. Our copier, we've had it for 14 years, is on its last leg. And um, so our little copy man that we deal with all the time has come up with a um, Farming for us basically saying that uh, you can replace the copier along with a finisher and uh, the finisher has what? Um, it's staples. Oh, it, it's staples and folates and things like that which meant it did before for us. It's nice. And um, um, and yields, uh, the toner that he's giving us yields twice as many copies I believe as we had before. So. Uh, for a total of $6,229 with their trade-in value. And so uh, we couldn't, we called a couple places to try to get, you know, some some other ideas of, you know, was that purchase price basically in line? And also what he's gonna do is he's going to uh, take our existing uh, uh, maintenance contract and, uh, you know, let it run through 2014 also, so that is good. And I kind of basically found that it's a pretty good price. Uh, we're talking about, like, here's one that kind of does everything the same, but doesn't have the finisher on it for $6,100. And here's another one that, uh, again, doesn't have the finisher. And uh, that was another $5,877. And of course, all these are not delivered. And we're talking about this is delivered and set up because in, and uh, has set up in preparation and also uh, delivery. So, and uh, so it's, you know, we're, we're fully covered. So I think we're in a pretty good ballpark here. You know, I was saying so. I just went online and punched in some numbers, punched in this description. It didn't come out with the M for Michael, M264. But I was coming up with some numbers in the Two to three thousand dollar range. You must not have had everything yeah. on there. So I just kind of put the brakes yeah. and I was hoping someone else brought something to the table. Is this a color print? No, no, no there's that M stands right, for and it's got the finisher on there. It's probably was the previous one color print? Mm -hmm. But this brings us up into the um, the new world where this is just a, a, a copier. Mm -hmm. This also. Uh, you can scan images on it, and you can scan the email, and you can do things like that. Number. Right. Those are all different model numbers. As I said, this doesn't have to finish your, like that. But like I said, it's something that. like the model you punch in. Right. 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 The, 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 the 
264. Huh? Can you do that real quick? I'm going to punch in the, M, the sharp MX dash M264. And I can't. I did that, but I think we did all that. You know, we couldn't yes. find anything that was there. That's why we were looking for things that were really just put price in here. Like I said, when I, when I did that, I came up with about $3,000. Like, oh, oh. Those are different models. Those two of the resources. There's there different, different models. models and different, but we're trying to get an estimate of the story in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have the finishers, but the finishers on them cost an extra $18. Well, right. So. That's all I looked for right. was the copy, right? Right. She the fish, I did punch in for a finisher. Right. It was, I don't know, I had a $1,200. So yeah, I just no, wanted I to know. compare apples with apples. And, but, um, and I wanted to, you know, I really wanted to. From what know we've seen, we've seen. The gist of this price, the $6,700. 62. 62. No, I'm just, I just punched in that. Forget the trading, the $6,700 just for that price. I didn't deduct the minus. Right. Now, on this one that you recommended, you said a special instruction. $2,800. Existing MP. Maintenance contract. Yes, that's our maintenance mean, contract. That's what they right. right. And then we're getting a so called twenty eight hundred dollars. Is this trading. the same company that sold This it is the you? company that sold it to us and comes in and ma maintains it for us all the time. And um, he's a good guy. He's easy to work with. Will works with him real well. I met him when I was in here and we were talking about it. Um, the one we have now, if you make a copy, it goes clunk, 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 and you're missing a part. In fact, actually. That he was having problems, he can't even get parts for what we've got at 14 years old. So we have a maintenance agreement mm -hmm. for them to fix the concrete. To come out and uh, maintain and it's still it. Going and to pump, to pump, 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 pump. Well, no, 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 no. He, he said he would have to get a part, which then we have to pay for a part. And I said, no, don't do anything because I'm not going to pay for a part and then have to get a new copier. So. Did he no. tell you an estimate cost no, for that no, part? No, no, we did not. But I, we can't keep going on. This can, this is not a new one. Last year we were talking about getting a new one. And so this year is, again, um, you know, it's one that we really need. And this one is, um, you know, they're, they're, he said this is a sale price. So. Uh, well, one thing I learned in business school, everything is on sale. How long is the warranty with the new equipment? The Irrespective of the, the warranty, I'm the They used to give you a, a year of warranty, maybe extra warranty. Yeah. Warranty. Right. yeah. 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 So, yeah. so, so he would extend it through. That's our same. maintenance contract, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. That we've, we've already paid for. Yeah, that's, so that's two different things. So if we purchase a new machine, we're going to have a year manufacturing warranty. Plus, Plus right. so our this is automatic. This is obviously 14 years old, but it seems as if we have a maintenance, a yearly maintenance. Right. It's we have a maintenance contract. contract. Okay. All right. So, okay. so we halfway there. So now we're going to get the new equipment. He's going to extend it, and we would have to renew it after he's right. well, after December second. Right. Well, right. see the language he uses in here. He says, balance of existing MA makes this agreement. Transfer, mm -hmm. right. transfer to new equipment, extending the warranty. Now, we got a warranty on one hand, and we got a maintenance agreement on the other. Mm -hmm. Now, if we purchase that new equipment, there is a warranty right. with it. I agree. It's my understanding the maintenance agreement is an addition to that. Well, here's the thing. It's, it's, a, it's two different things. Warranty. That's what I'm saying. It's two different things. Warranty is if something break within that year time frame. The manufacturer will pay for a part replacement, but not mm -hmm. not to actually install. They're not going to pay for the labor. Mm -hmm. So this maintenance agreement, if we have our year manufacturer warranty, this maintenance agreement saying, well, we have a year already on that one. We have a year of it, I would assume, maintenance agreement on the existing machine. Right. So yeah, when we get the new one, he's saying that he will carry it out. For the remainder, I guess, of this year, at least. Well, see, that's my question. It's, it's I think mean, he just wrote it funny. Well, that's, 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 that's the clarification. Yes. I think that's the clarification. Yeah. That's, that's my so, understanding that so, he wrote it funny. That, but that I, we're just getting the balance of the maintenance agreement that goes on until the seventh. No, I kind of understand what he's trying to say right. here. All he's saying is basically, again, we're going to get new equipment, and not only are we going to have a year manufacturing warranty. We're going to take the remaining five, six months 
that's on that equipment as a maintenance warranty and put it on a new one. So you're going to have two fold. Right now we only have one type of insurance on that per se, it's the maintenance agreement. When we get the new one, we're going to have the extended, uh, the manufacturer agreement or warranty in addition to the remaining six months of the extended maintenance agreement on that. Come in and service it and yeah. clean it because they come he cleans it and everything. It's not yeah. He's not, he's not, he didn't express yeah, it. He's not, he's not talking yeah. about the manufacturer. That's, that's kind of a given for manufacturer warranty. That's usually a given. That's a given. In business, it's not a given. Oh, it's right. <laughs> okay. This little guy's an honest guy. He has a right. I think he just expressed it yeah. incorrectly. That was all. He just, right. he just meant that he's extending the program. See, that's why he said if you look at it, it says, it says special instructions. Special. You know, and that's why he writes up it. He says system discount for trading at 31%. Right. So he's going to have a 31% trading discount? Yeah, that's a salvage value. Right. Salvage value is 31%. So that's that $2,800 is going to right now. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's the $2,800. Mm -hmm. Right. As long as, I mean, you know, Willa is a very efficient person. All I'm as saying is. As long as she's satisfied with this, as well, long as the language is fine, I don't have a problem. Well, all I'm saying is when I punched in on this type of copier, it came in at $3,000 somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's all. But that was without the finish. I didn't think that's a whole different thing. Yeah. I'm comparing three thousand to sixty-seven hundred. That's what I was looking at. But I thought Don said that the sheep so she has two different models. They're two different models, but they're similar. I mean, they're, that's, you all know, right. that's all I can do is look at similar models that you know. Can we just say that the problem? That's all. That's all. Um, and I, and that's what. But <laughs> the bottom line is that I just want the language corrected. So, you know, well, it won't be a dispute all right, we'll just when it comes to So we said the balance, the balance will basically say the balance of the contract will transfer over until December 21st, and that will go along with the extended warranty, so, which is normal for the year's time. All right, would you want to make a motion, James, and word it? So well, as soon as Willow we'll gets to it. I can, find the, I can find the posse, but I can't find it. There's not a price with the copy. With this one? Yeah. You, did, did you put the copy number in and then put the price in the Google? Put the word there too. Is the current copy working? It works, it's, but it's, it's not. It's limping yeah. along. It's limping. It's limping. It hates me. So whenever I try to make a copy, it doesn't work. So. I want to get rid of it. It's, it's, it's a little machine. It doesn't ever work right. But it also has, you know, it's going to be a better one because it's, um, you're going to be able to get on there and scan to your email. So like if you want to then, you know, put something in an email to somebody, you can scan it right into it and it makes it much more efficient. To I said, well, it does come back with the price like 3000 I said we hold off on this. And, and if she's not finding it right now, let's, uh, you know, anything copied up? Okay. Let's go ahead. Can you go ahead, James? You want to make a motion on this? Then? Yeah. Did what? Did, did she find? Did she find? She's it? not finding it. She's okay. not. I move that we purchase the uh, uh, copy of the Sharp company. Yeah. MCS. Sharp copy in the amount of six thousand two hundred twenty nine. Sense. With the understanding of the language of the contract versus warranty and maintenance agreement is going to be All right. All right. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? Yeah, I, I just can't vote on that until I get clarity. Uh, I can't vote. I cannot vote yes until I get clarity on the big disparity in prices. So uh, that I saw. All right. Roll call. Vote, please. Trustee Brown? No. Trustee yes. Young? Yes. Yes, we will get clarity on that contract. Okay. And that will be what we will do on that. We'll leave that out. So that we can make sure I do that. 
Okay. Um, the Senior Services Center of Will County, which is the one that uh, they do a lot of, you see the back of the sheet. There's one that all provides meals on wheels, and uh, in Moni alone, in Up County Township, uh, they had 102 persons receive home delivered meals for a total of 14,722 meals delivered, and along with all the other services. Um, we gave them $1,500 last year. That's all we're asking for is to get this year. Um, what I would like to do, though, is if we take a vote, have this vote so that, because uh, we paid for this last in April of, uh, of uh, last year. So now we, uh, we need to make this that uh, we are authorizing this to be paid out of our new budget in April of 2014. Motion to social service agreement between the service center of Will County. Is that the team that we gave that was in 2013? That was in March, I mean, sorry, April, April. of 2013. So saying if we pass this tonight, we pass to pay them in April of 2014. So it comes out of our new budget because we've already paid them $1,500 on this budget. Okay, I move that we um, authorize $1,500 for senior citizens to send Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, Still think they're too top heavy as far as paying the administrators and things like that. And I'm not not sure what is going to service this as my opinion. I think they're going to have a lot of money. And you know, if you look at our budget, we look pretty top every salary wise because all the because all the officials come out of our salary. So if you look at that, it doesn't look like we. Three million, three million five hundred thousand plus dollars in revenues and two plus two point three million dollars in salaries and French I think when she was in here, she explained it though, you know, and they, they um, she, I believe she explained it to our satisfaction last time she was here. So, is there uh, okay? Any further discussion? Roll call, vote, please. Mr. Brown. No. Seniors are going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Gray. Trustee Gray. Trustee Young. Yes. Supervisor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Seniors are going to put this on the web. <laughs> he votes yeah. against seniors. He can read up all the rules. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move into some line item transfers. Um, there's the. Um, Let's start with the Little Bridge. Um, the Mystic Project. Contingencies um, from 5195 contingencies, 250 to 5010 payroll taxes, and uh, 700 to 5020 IMRF. Uh, is there a motion to uh, make those transfers? Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything? For a second? Second. Second. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. To the last member? Yes. Um, make a motion for, let's see, for uh, the assessment budget. Um, there's a lot of transfers. Um, as per the sheet written, uh, 5030, from line item 5030, health insurance. They're taking a thousand from there and putting it in payroll expenses, which is salaries, which is land five thousand. Fifty one ninety five contingencies, taking two thousand there and also putting it in payroll expenses and salaries, number five thousand. Taking fifty nine eighty office maintenance, one thousand dollars and putting it in payroll expense salaries, uh, five thousand. 
5030 health insurance, taking $480 and putting in 5220 for computer equipment purchase. 5046 professional fees network consultant, take $220 and put 5010 to, to uh, make the payroll taxes. 5046 professional fees consultant, $100 and put in 5100 office supplies. 5046 uh, consultant uh, to $300 to 5110 telephone and 5130 computer software $200 to 5125 business subscriptions. Now you're not going to find negatives on all these lines, but we're trying to be as proactive for the rest of the year because our budget year ends on March 31st and when we were looking at it we were saying some of these line items are going to be a problem so that we want to make sure that we are covered for when we put the last payroll in and you know all the last billing yet. So that's why we have so many transfers on that. Is there a motion to uh, uh, approve the line item transfers for the assessor's budget? Second. 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 Any further discussion? I have one question. I know one of the items uh, was the equipment purchase. Uh, that we're expecting a uh, reimbursement of that. And I was wondering if it's the, after the 31st when we get that, is that going to be uh, allocated back to the assessors? Now, unfortunately, when things like that happen, it elevates, it doesn't, it doesn't go back into there, it goes into a revenue line that's called other, which is in the top revenue line, so it doesn't go back into that. I have a feeling they're probably going to give you a credit, and if they give you a credit rather than pay you back, and I don't know if we had any word back from them, it's uh, a credit, then uh, that probably would be better for you, and then you'd have that credit to use in the uh, new budget year. You'd be able to use it next year. Okay, so if it comes back as a credit, if then it comes back as a credit, you definitely can use it next year. If it comes back as, as money, money, then it goes yeah. into a, an, a, an amorphous other, so okay. it's lost okay. there. Okay. All right. Um, did we have a roll call vote in that? No. Okay, roll call. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. Yes. And the general town fund, we've got from 5195 contingencies, 1153 to 5333 is a newsletter, uh, $2,400 to 5329 dial ride, uh, 250 to 5110 telephone. And $5,000, I'm sorry, and then, then from uh, 50, line item 5960 debt service, $5,000 to 5215 equipment purchase. <coughs> Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee yes. Burgess? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. Glad that yes. Okay. Hopefully we will be, if we try to be as proactive as possible, there might be a few changes we do have. Uh, we will call on all building by March 31st. By the end of March, then anything that has come up between now and March will then be approved uh, prior to our, uh, uh, in our, we'll have a separate section for March 20th, March 31st bills in next April, but uh, hopefully we'll have been, you know, we've been corrected enough that we don't have any transfers, so we'll have to make transfers for that time. Okay, next is in the line is a contract renewal for TFH clean services for the assessor's office. I attached a copy of last year's contract and you'll notice that there was no change in the amount of money she's kept the, uh, uh, her services the same. Yes, so I told her there was no extra added to the budget. Right. So, okay. <laughs> okay. So, <she> is. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> can't get anything to buy right. for it. Right. Right. So, please, you please with the word? Yes. Okay. Mary does pretty good. Oh, one thing I want to say on that is not, this is not for uh, the TA, TFH, uh, but you know there was a change um, of uh, the cleaning, I guess, agreement that was between the Will County and uh, for their uh, restrooms, their most of the uh, their clients use those restrooms, but they decided that it wasn't going to be responsible anymore for it. So uh, 
the village had to step up and do, and they're not really out there, you know, some, I mean, because they don't work over there, it's not impacting them. I mean, even to provide in tissue, I don't know if you noticed that in, in some of my uh, office supplies, we had to provide the hand soap, the tissue, um, and then, of course, uh, the cleaning is not as regular as it was. So Will County's not providing They said they're not going to do it no more. Oh, so I'm sorry. No one is going to clean them. I mean, they, they do send a guy in once a week now, right? Once a week? Yeah. Uh, we do too, right? He was doing, yeah, we're doing it once a week. They, they were doing, doing it twice a week, but then they was also replacing the supplies. They're not doing it. Shouldn't the washroom be clean every day? <laughs> well, well, the thing is, too, is that their clients show it. Yeah, their clients, the, the health department the clients are the ones that show it. It's the health department? Yeah. yeah. Well, the oxymoron. Okay, thank you. <laughs> But because the, the uh, facilities are located outside of their office, just like it's outside our office, they're saying it's the village, because the village owns that building. Mm -hmm. So your staff uses the same bill. Mm -hmm. So does our leasing contract say anything about that? Well, um, you know, when this first came up, I, you know, I, I specifically spoke to the issue of the building being cleaned on a daily basis. And it's when we first completed this contract, Okay, because it was transferred over from the previous one into mm -hmm. TFA. Uh, but I was, that was the office where I was saying it needed to be cleaned daily. But the bathroom, that's a different the story. The bathroom needs to that's be a different daily. story. Yeah. Yeah. The bathroom yeah. needs to be cleaned yeah. daily. Because if there's any germs to be spread, it's yeah. going to come from that bathroom. Right. But we at that one. time, the health department we was the doing it. That's what I'm telling you. But now, 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 it's, now it's not being done. No, it's not. No. not and, and actually, you have staff using it every day. Yes. Do you know what your contract says about the cleaning of that bathroom? No. I don't remember. No. So you might be able to pull can that it out. Up, let me know, but I, I believe so. I don't think it addresses that. Well, we address we only that. our space. I, I can't and recall. actually, there is a hallway that is a common, you know, a, a common, a, right, common, common hallway mm -hmm. plus the common bathroom. And I don't know if that's been addressed. And actually, uh, the health department is probably right. It probably should be the villages. But but I just thought I'd mention that because I, I don't know if I had told y'all that before, but that's been ever since when? It's been, well, it's been about at least at least six months since he stopped cleaning it. Yeah. yeah. So when, we, when you say he, are we talking about the village or are we talking about the health department? We're talking about the health department in January. Okay, so when the health department stopped doing it, who started doing it? The village. The village. Is the village still village or university park? But they don't do they it regularly. So have y'all called Mr. Lanier and asked, you know, hey, what's what's Oh, on? we went we went through. Oh okay. you and Mr. Lanier. Okay, and so it's then, not being done. I mean they are saying this is what they're offering for that. You know And that's one time a week. Mm -hmm. We need clarity. Well please pull we our contract and we'll look at it tomorrow and uh and see what it says according to that bathroom, whether it's our responsibility. I've spent part of it has been we've done it once a week, so right. That's because you know, and then the really health department will get it a couple times. So now we also the supplies and all there. And if it's not addressed in there, then it's it's got to be the villages. Well, you know what? I, you know, I don't want to get into this push and pull situation. The bottom line is that we've got people over there that represents Monkey Township, and that bathroom needs to be cleaned on a daily basis. Now, if, if we need time for a little research, I don't have a problem with that. But I don't want to get, we know the situation in University Park. And I don't want to get into a push-pull situation with them. Either they're going to do it or they're not going to do it. Period. And if they don't do it, then we need to take some type of action so you and your staff, Sandra, can have a clean facility. Because if there's any germ spread, it's going to come from that bathroom. Okay? And then we can be looking at something further if somebody gets sick. And so we're going to change the contract for the people who do the cleaning. I think we should wait then we have to let Willow do what she needs to do. About that. And then okay, if, if, if we, it's my suggestion to the board. Uh, the bottom line is we, we need a clean. We wait Period. until Willow has time to research. Bring this back next month. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, know okay. I, I don't know. You know, I would not go in that bathroom. No. It's not clean every day. No, it's a little wider for the time. 
Yeah, I think yeah. we can well, approve this part. Well, I think we need to rework this, you know, to ensure well, we should approve this because it is due as of April 1st. And so she can bring maybe an this. addendum to the contract. Well, I'm not certain that we should be responsible for cleaning that bathroom. But we are responsible for our employees. The problem is this. The problem is this. I think there are all adults who are in the office. So they know that they can make their own decision when they want to use it. I'm only suggesting that that facility with our employees open needs to be cleaned every day. Okay, if you want to take this back and rework it after Will has had time to, to look at and find out whose responsibility it is, we don't have to get into no further discussion with Village University Park if Mr. Lanier said this is what you're going to get and we know better. So then that would just change. No, 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 when does it expire? April first. So this is she's up for renewal. So that means so that means we will not have it back. We so have to be service can still be provided. We just haven't finalized. We need to get paid, but her contract. We need to approve this contract, and then we can always come back and address an amendment. An amendment if necessary, but I think that it needs to be discussed, Sandra. Mm -hmm. We should be discussing it and once we look at the contract and see what it says in there it, with, with Mr. Lanier and see what he's going to say. Mm -hmm. And because I think that's important. If it's their responsibility, then it should be. Right, that's what theirs. the health department is saying. I'll talk to Mr. Okay, thank you. Then we will. Is there a motion to approve the contract as it is right now for? The same as last year, $5,220. I motion that we approve Tangle Fox Truck Hotel Cleaning Services. <laughs> what? That's <laughs> right. For the price of $5,220. What should it be? Just the military. For, <laughs> for, the, for the upcoming term for April 1st, 2014 <laughs> to March 31st, 2015. Is a second? You gotta repeat the phonetic no. alphabet. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right, any further discussion? Yeah, it's with the understanding that we're going to add an addendum to this. Not what they may. We aren't going to pass it with that understanding. We'll pass it, and if necessary, yeah. after we read the contract, and Sandra has discussed it with Mr. Lanier, we'll see what's necessary for next month. And well, if she feels, and if she feels the contract is necessary and we addendum, yeah. she can bring us an addendum next month. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, that's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. That if if depending upon what Will finds out, and based upon what you discuss with Miss Mary Trucks, if this does not meet the needs, we can add to it next month. Is that what we bring to? Well, we just the, basically the vote is that we are we are approving this contract. That's what the con that's the vote. And then we all know that that's what else we're going to do. But that's not part of the vote. But, <coughs> well, see, I don't want to get into it. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. I don't want to get into right. no conflict. I mean, when it comes What's to next week? month at our board meeting, we should have clarity or we should have an action item to approve uh, a thing or, or, or some type of writer to this. Yes. And you bring a bid to say this is how much it's going to cost for her to do these two right. How, how much more is going to cost? How much more? Yeah. yeah. So that can be that can even that. be a little separate contract. Well, look, tomorrow okay. when you call the contract, scan it and send it over to Sandra, and that way Sandra will have him read it, and then she can take it, you know, read it and see if it needs. For and I guess we won't say every day. I guess a policy does she come now? When you're open every once, every day, once, once a week, so they clean up the office, and when she's there, she, they clean the bath. Okay, so how will we do that? See, that's a whole different yeah. thing. Well, well that's why I said we just I yeah. mean, Do we just bring her there just to clean the washroom? Yeah. You you have to because okay. I, our office don't need to be cleaned every day. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So, okay. That's why I said it might be the villages, so it might not even be a problem. So right. let's vote on this. There, uh, it's a. There is a motion and a second, and you vote. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. Trustee Brown? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Next is Modi Youth Sports Baseball, Softball, Social Service Agreement. 
We've done one every year uh, for $550 with Lamoni Youth Sports Baseball. Uh, what we usually do is we do a team sponsor with the business name on the back of the jersey for $350. And then there is a repeat banner, um, which is $200. $200 on one side and it says $175 on the other side, but I'm pretty sure it was $200 last year. So uh, we'll go with $200. I thought it was three. No, 300 is the first year banner. The repeat banner on the, on, the, on the front says $200 and uh, it's $350 for the uh, team sponsor. So that was $550. Uh, we had asked them for a budget. Um, like we do every year, but they didn't uh, have one. Uh, they came by tonight, and, and uh, was, the girl was stuck. She was just dropping off a letter of request again. We said, no, we were asking for the budget. And she said, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have that with me. So uh, we don't have that. But the problem comes, if we don't vote on this tonight, as we always do, then they start their teams and buying their t-shirts and everything next year, so I mean, in April. So then we probably wouldn't be able to uh, have a team, a uh, sponsor team. They're getting us to us kind of late. Uh, well, they always get it to us in March, though, so, right. because they do April, yeah. Sometimes they, yeah. yeah they, this is like the normal time. <clears throat> so is there a motion for $550 to the Moni Youth Sports Baseball Softball Association? So $550. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. For a second? Second. Add any, any further discussion? Uh, just a little bit more clarity on again that $550 will consist of what again? Uh, repeat banners, which they put up every year and blows off sometimes in that storm. Right <laughs> on the fence there. Have you noticed our fence? Yes, yes. In fact, one year it wasn't there, and I kept mm -hmm. going by when I was going to work. Mm -hmm. And so I had a little call, and they said, oh, we forgot to put it up this year. So if you ever notice that our banner's not there, let us know, and we will call. Because they had, they had forgotten all the repeat banners. Okay, so we have repeat banners. And, and 350 for the team sponsor with the business name on the jersey. And we, we did that before, too? Mm -hmm. yes. so the same thing we do. Right. Okay. So the jerseys, right? Right. Okay. Alrighty. $550. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Brown. Yes. Trustee Burgess. Yes. Trustee Young. Yes. Trustee Yes. Okay. Okay. Started. Um, next is the Creek Moni Post-Prom. Um, we got it to us on time. Last year, we they didn't get it to us until after the prom, so we didn't donate because it was after the fact. Um, so we have an option of $50, $75, $100, 200 or other. Um, I think we've given them, what was our past month we gave them when we did give to them? I think it was just 100 On 100 we only gave them. So would somebody like to make a motion to uh, do a social service agreement with the post prom? For Creek Um, it's an approved lawyer. 
Uh, we, she did not go through our township attorney. And I don't know, uh, we don't have any corroborating for the 525. Did you bring with you what it was? Um, no, what you have already received was for the 525. What you, I'm giving you now, what was the, the letter that he was referring to that you reviewed for the 42? He responded to this letter to uh, do the research that, he, that you already have now. But I don't, what I'm looking for is I want his answer back to us, what he, what gives his opinion. Well, I want to see what he's billing us for here. Yeah, okay, you have, first thing you have the detail. Uh, yes, it just says, yeah. are you billing from uh, request from 2-6, research issue requesting them regarding budgetary concerns right. of assessor's office and interpretation of provisions of the property tax okay. code, which, uh, and then on 2-6, I'll uh, respond to further emails from Ms. Hurd, and then on 224, which is after our board meeting, we told her she had to use our lawyer. It says review and respond to emails from Assessor Hurd regarding the scope of representation and issues with township. Board. Yeah, I had asked her the same question that I asked the uh, attorney about what is uh, considered a genuine uh, conflict of interest. And no, yes, so, after so, she knew you so no, no, so I'm saying I asked him a question just like I did the township attorney. Um, but what you received last month is the response of what he gave to this letter, which was the letter charge was the first 42. Re reviewing this letter was the first 42. The response that you got last month, which was the email communications and his research on the affidavit and so forth when he made the recommendation as so as the attorney did say the affidavit is not what you use you know and so he said use this normal whatever's done or submit the bill and so that's why i got around to the invoice so you already have gotten that all right here's any other thing then. all right yes so it's a total of 567 dollars um for an unauthorized attorney um why are you saying that? Because it is an unauthorized expense. It's a, your, it's a mandate that we use the township attorney. So uh, let's not get into quibbling about well, it. Well, I'm just asking because whenever I submit an invoice for approval to the board, all of them are unauthorized until they get approved. Yes, not necessarily. Some of things are approved because or can be approved easily because it's legal. This is uh, one that is not for our policy. Yeah. All right. Um, what it, I like the board discussion on this. I have my opinion on it, but I want to hear what everybody else thinks about it. We also have the uh, uh, opinion of Mr. Shanubal that says that uh, it is unauthorized, uh, and that she should use our township attorney. And uh, just the question, I guess, is, is do we want to uh, say, okay, this was bad, but she didn't remember that she was given the policy previously, so we should go ahead and authorize the 567, or should we deny it? That's the question. So I'd like to. I need some time. Okay. We'll give her a few minutes. letter only the board can contract for services is that correct 
Uh, right, I think what this probably means, Mr. Richards probably handles it by, instead of having a contract sign, he probably sends off a letter that explains what he's going to do and uh, looks for the client's side and engage with letter of insurance. And uh, isn't that a contract, basically? Yeah, it's, it's, it's used by a lot of lawyers as a substitute for a contract. Okay. So basically, both sides she didn't have the authority to do that. Well, you know, you're back to dealing with the uh, issue that I cited from the state statute about the, the, the township attorney represents the township. And section four of your ordinance, which says no township official shall incur legal expenses or costs in his slash her official capacity at township expense through the employment of an attorney or law firm other than the designated township attorney except as provided herein. And then we talk about later on, it talks about the conflict if the board wants to decide that there's a conflicting position and authorize payment for the attorney. But I had no I had no copy of that ordinance and I wasn't aware that that's what because otherwise I wouldn't have put the request in the line item for it, you know, just assuming that I was gonna get the money to cover it. And also, there was money. Let me ask you this now. There was money in my budget this current year for a thousand. It never had explained to me, but before you can use this, or that that money is only for you to use to pay the uh, township attorney. You see what I'm saying? So it would, it would have never come to me to say, oh, that's not for you to use, really. That's basically what you're saying. Yes. Because Except for the fact that I've given you a copy of that policy a, a year or two ago when we were discussing other no, matters. No, no, you did not. Yes, I did. Yes. Well, even when you were reading from it last week and you didn't give me a copy, I had to call Willa to ask for a copy. So, I mean, even when you're, when you're using it as your point of case, I would think that you would have given a copy then. I didn't get a copy before. I didn't know that this was the requirement. I'm telling you. And for sure, with the, having a thousand dollars already in my line item for legal, that's already there, and I was requesting it to be increased, I never knew that it was really going to be not for me to use. You know, because as you say, it's, he's the township attorney. He's basically servicing me without any charge. I would assume. But I, again, and the, and the other thing that is is that these also happen to be. Basically, it's a personal business expense for the simple fact that she's asking is if she can charge the township. I mean, it's a business, as a business owner, she's saying, can I charge the township even though I work for the township? So to me, that's a business expense question for herself. What I asked him and what I explained to you is that, what's the best way to do this? I first asked him about an affidavit, which was just my name, okay? Then he said, well, that's not the proper uh, document to use. So then I said, well, should I, you know, what do I use? And you can see in the letter, I said, give me some advice on that. That's what his advice was back, you know, just use the standard way that you get paid. And even he came back and said, uh, when I said, well, should I do an invoice with my business name or, or not? He says, as long as you have full disclosure to the, to the board, that the business is associated to you, that that is legal and is fine. So he never said, well, you shouldn't do that, period, because you are already, you know, be getting paid a salary. See, that's the problem, not using a township attorney because he apparently isn't familiar well, with township law. Okay, but I'm just saying nothing was ever indicated to me that the $1,000 that was already in my budget was really not for me to use. You know what I'm saying? So. I, because why would I have to have money in the budget for, for legal, uh, if, you know, counsel right. if I get the township a, a, a attorney for, for free? That's your opinion from the uh, board. And let's move forward. I mean, to, to get uh, the RSS to get the right information that she needs, right? Move forward. Mm -hmm. She knows the court. I'll be asking for advice now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really. <laughs> no problem. We just made a decision on a copier that we possibly could have got $3,000 less. Mm -hmm. And we can't sit here and argue with our assessment. And so, for how much does it feel like? Five. Five hundred and sixty-seven dollars for yeah. this last bill. So, now this is and that includes the prior. And that was worth. That was actually a. That was actually. 
Right. Yes. Yeah. That was actually work performed for the assessment. Now this is all the billing we're going to get. There's nothing yeah. else. All right. I, like I said, I asked in the last question the same thing I asked the last the, the township attorney. That's what right. constitutes genuine conflict of interest? All right. Now wait, wait, but there was one thing though. You had said you changed the uh, ordinance so that there could be a possible. Oh, you're not going to do that? I don't know. It's later on in the budget. Yeah, but I'm just saying, so I'm just saying that that might be the exception. No, and then I don't say you can use any attorney for anything. It's very specific about using it only for, uh, you know, assessment hearings. Well, here's right. That's what I'm saying. It just doesn't have anything to do with assessment hearings. So it's, a, it's not. No, this doesn't, doesn't, but I'm saying it's for, my, am I understanding? And that is only for discussion only, and it's, I don't know if that'll go any further than that. It's just my thinking. So, I don't know. Okay, uh, all right, we've heard from Maurice. <clears throat> I got certain thoughts. One, this board has an attorney. And that's Attorney Joseph Sue. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into any other situations where we have another attorney. If Attorney Sue cannot handle our legal problems, I think it's incumbent upon him to discuss with his partners and they go find us somewhere. Okay? I think last month I mentioned that this board was not denying legal service. If you feel that you need the legal service, okay. that's why we got you. So Mr. Newton to represent mm -hmm. us. Okay? And if there was any issues, then you can't work it out with him, then it's up to us to decide what to do about it. So I want to make that very clear that the legal representation for Moni Township is done by Attorney Joseph Snoop. Okay? I just said that I be asking him for the opinions or whatever else. The well, second thing is that. You did have a thousand dollars in your budget for me, you know, whether or not you knew how to use it. So <coughs> or if I could even it was there. It was there. Okay. Or if I could even use it. I'm going to agree with Maurice and, and incline to move forward. Okay. But one of the things I don't like is that one of these bills says February 24th. That was four days after we met. For the board, okay. We made it very clear in the last board meeting. No outside legal service. Everything had to go through our. <coughs> what I understood from the last board meeting is that it was going to be conferred to the attorney. That's what I understood. But he has a bill down here for 12 minutes for February 24th. Mm -hmm. And that comes from Kavanaugh, Attorney Kavanaugh's office. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's four days after we last met. Right. So again, he violated the direction of the board case. Okay? Um, and, and I'm not comfortable with that. But I'm I, was, I was understanding that it was still open to this meeting. No, sir. And until I got some kind of uh, uh, input back from the attorney. No, no. Because see, I was the one that brought it up. Okay. I said very clearly that all legal positions <coughs> should be handled through our attorney mm -hmm. and that you need to engage in the conversation. And if I he did. doesn't, if he doesn't, you need to bring it back to us. Okay, and I did engage him in conversation. So there and was he no did reason. give me an opinion. Okay, but there was no reason for you to have a bill for February 24th. Attorney Kavanaugh. I had asked him the same question. So I asked him both the same question. Okay. And I got I got an immediate response. But you should not have. The board had provided you with the guidance. Okay? We had provided you with the service. There was no need to create an additional legal bill. Right. So I, I remember you saying, saying talk to the, the attorney, and I did that. So <coughs> I understand. I did what you did. Any, any bills before the then could be up for discussion as being, you know, um, ambiguous issues. Okay? I'll, I'll, I'll write you that. Okay, but anything after the board gives you guidance about should not exist. Okay, so that's my second concern. The third concern I have is we have an attorney that did a lot of extensive work to keep us out of trouble legally. We got to follow him. Everybody in the township has to follow him. Okay, because you know legal fees are expensive. Very expensive. Okay, and if we don't follow his guidance. I, I'm with you 100%. And let me ask you a question though. When I do get counsel from him, is it going to be charged to my budget? It will be if you ask him a question. This, this, I'm being nice on this last question because it was actually the board that instructed me to go to Joseph Noogle to right. find out. They did. Who they and, did. And, get, and I had asked for that. Right. And you also sent in a request to him yeah. Yeah. because I said, well, it's kind of in the same line as what I said. 
I'm eating those expenses out of my budget. Okay. Because because they did say yes. Right. Because right. it was okay. kind of the same thing. All right. But just any other expenses that you ask of Joe will be yours. Okay. And, and then and he he marks his. He'll say assessor. Okay. And then, you know, okay. So then. Okay, so then I'm going to be limited to only a thousand dollars for that's your, what you have in your budget of your council. That's what you have. So in if your I budget. need it for more, like for doing assessments, I'm just out of luck. Yeah, that's what you have in your budget now. Mm -hmm. Now you know, Sandra, this is the thing. This is the thing. If you get hit with something legally, like I asked you last month, are there any legal pending issues we need to know about? You said no. Okay. However, you want the plan field to be level when you go to these appeal hearings. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you get hit with something. You contact him. If the bill goes up, then it's incumbent upon us to get you the service that you need through our attorney, and then we figure out how the bill is going to be paid. You don't have to worry about it. If it exceeds your budget, we do the same thing we did before. Was we transfer it? funds. Yeah, why not? From, 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 from my budget. Funds, yes. Yeah. Yes, within your budget. But what if I don't have, you know, the extra, because as it is, did you see the revision that I have? It's very tight. What if I don't have the extra to pay? So, so I just let us worry out. about that. Okay, I'm, I'm hearing and he's you say he's providing the little service for us. That's that. why that you know now you change your budget back. If you notice it's revised budget that's on the table, yeah. and it's where she's changed, so she's added uh, more money to her payroll. Yeah, she's I added had to. more money to a few other things. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so she also then she cut back from six thousand to a thousand in her attorney line, and then she also cut back from. Uh, the contingency. Uh, her contingency right. line she wants for 1500 she took it back with thousand. I had to. So, <laughs> so you know, the thing is is that she's, she's, you know, she's has an adequate budget and there is enough room in there to take other line items so there shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I, 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 I guess what I should yeah. say, I, what I should add into this is I wouldn't imagine that it would work this way. I wouldn't imagine that if you were asking me a question, mm -hmm. or any officer was asking me a question, mm -hmm. that I would be watching my watch, and when it goes over, what, a thousand, you said a thousand? Yeah. You said a thousand dollars. I think I think I, I think I really got to two hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be watching my watch and saying, okay, now it's five hours, so I'm done talking to you. What, what more likely is going to happen mm -hmm. is we're going to complete our business, and then it's going to be for you, and the board to argue about whose budget should be charged. And so let's hope possible. that it will continue as it has in the last few years, that we don't have any expenses at all. Yeah. But, but this if their problem arises, Sandra will know. But Sandra, right now the question is, is are we going to pay this outside bill? Right. So I would say let's stick to yep. what we're all talking right. about. All right, now, now I, I, got one, I got one other concern. Okay. See this letter saying it was dated January 29th. Uh -huh. There's some issues in here that presents the impression that you're in conflict with the board. And this attorney is providing with legal guidance as to what you need to do about it. Okay? Case in point, you mentioned in the second paragraph, elected office salary has not received an increase in 12 years. Well, we dealt with that. Okay? We dealt with that. Attorneys knew we did the research. It can't be increased. Okay? I said over 12 years. Yeah, but Sandra, you know what? And at $32,000 a year plus $15,000 in fringe benefits, that job is almost paying 48 close to $50,000, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, yeah. $32,000 plus $15,000, what's that? $47,000? So you're talking, about, you're talking about the health insurance. I'm that, talking about the health insurance and the every contribution of IMRF. Okay, that's okay. Plus $32,000 salary. Okay? That's not a cheap job. I mean, that's more than some people get in the school district that I work at. Okay. Okay? But they're not so, assessor's office. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. I understand that. All right. I understand that. Okay. And I understand that they work here, you know, from 7.30 to 2.30, and sometimes later than that, depending on how long they stay, they do lesson plans and meet with parents and talk to teachers. I believe and teachers your, your, your are schedule is as different. well. Okay? Your, your, I believe but, but see, my point is that, we have addressed that issue, and now you're trying to use taxpayers' dollars to go out and not talk to the attorney about an issue that we've already dealt with as a board. No, I did not ask that. him to address that issue. That's background information. That's all I gave. Okay, but to me, as I interpret it, is that you're using him to address that issue. All right, then you go on further, and you talk about uh, 
the Harbor Board. You know, we went riding around in circles about that. Okay? The board has made their decision. Okay? So, you know, I, I got a problem with the way this is structured. Okay? But it's, it's null and void now because, because we're going to sell this issue tonight and then move on to something else. The other issue that I have, and I haven't seen it, maybe it's going to come up on the agenda. Uh, let me just check this agenda just to make sure so I don't go deep here any further. Um, Alright, we're just gonna deal I'm just I'm just gonna deal with the, 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 the legal bill right now. That's all we're dealing with right now is a five hundred and fifty seven dollar legal bill, which is forty two dollars for the first billing and five hundred and twenty five dollars for the second billing. That's what we're uh, discussing. So you're saying that you don't like it, but you would approve it. What I'm saying is this, and, and I'll make the motion. But before I make the motion, let me let me just reiterate for the record. All legal issues, Moni Township, as long as I serve on this board, I'm going to direct towards attorney. Needs to be directed towards attorney Joseph Smith. He is our legal eagle for this township. No other attorney is to be hired because he provides us with the legal support, legal guidance, legal interpretation. I will make that very clear. Now, if, he, if, he, if the assessor or any other officer runs into a legal problem, it's incumbent upon him to find out what to do about it or to get the support we need. No other attorney is to be involved in unless Joseph Newell gives him his approval and, and, and notifies his board. Okay, except as he said, if it's a conflict of interest, which it's not. But I'm saying in that case, All legal problems are handled by attorney Joseph Smith. I would suggest that he's trying to do you a favor. I, 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 so, okay. I, I would suggest you wouldn't argue. Okay. <laughs> I think Joe's made it clear he's brought back to the table what he asked for. And I think everybody's on, on court right now when it comes to the legality of attorney use. So I think we're there. All right. Debbie, if you want to. Well, I wasn't here last month, so I. Just know that I'm just reading what is actually going on. And um, I agree, next time if you have any questions, you would go to our attorney. Absolutely. You know, no problem. And not deviate elsewhere. Yeah. All right. The question is Is there a motion to pay the $567 to Cravenon and Crumbling in the Fort Worth? Well, let's backtrack a little bit. James, you made a motion of what was I didn't make a motion, I just made a motion. No. No. There was no motion. What was he saying? I thought he, he said, said he was going to make a motion. He said he was going to make a motion. Okay, I'm going to go. You okay. would sit at the table. <laughs> 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 I mean, I won't have to multitask around here. We don't multitask, you're on the board. No, so that, that oh, is that board activity to motion. We need a motion, please. We're going to do this. I move that we pay the $567 to outstanding to the Fort Worth Law Firm of Kavanaugh, Rumley, and Crumbling. Motion, 
so moved. And you can't do that. And that's, that's you're, building, you're building the township for work that you're responsible for. Doing. You can't do that. That's illegal. So there's a motion that we do you deny paying the bill uh, for uh, as submitted by Sandra for her business business group dynamics? Is there a second? Second. Okay. Second by Debbie. Now discussion. And what exactly is the scope of work? The scope of work. What's the scope of work? It's inputting information for the assessor's office computers data entry it's not data entry it's uh, downloading um uh, massaging the data that comes from like uh the county for instance or from our database and and in uploading it to the web and then troubleshooting on whatever happens when it's not quite right you know when the information didn't upload or download or correct so this is township related work and, and what's the reason that we can't get additional compensation for the assessment? And it's a, it's, it's if she wants to continue outsourcing it, she can. She can bring it in house, she can. We just cannot pay her. It's a job that is done by the assessor's office. It's a normal job. And, and you know, it's something that she I'm just trying to get clarity. That's all. I'm just trying to get clarity. So this is, a, this is a normal job that you do, Sam? I have been doing it because um, there was, you know, a, a gap. But um, so you hired you hired someone. To do no, that? he Ray. Okay, like I said, <laughs> McDonald was saying he left. He never left. He just moved to Arizona. He was doing what he was doing in our office remotely. The problem was when we were having issues with downloads, he couldn't handle that sufficiently from remote. So I had to work as well as the database guy, you know, to, to get to resolve whatever issues were. Okay, so he's still responsible for that. It's just that when there's an issue, we almost have to be there. You do have to be there to, to fix it. And that's what I Because so we're happy. still paying Keith, I'm sorry, because I just I just actually signed a check for Keith for three months of downloads. So now this is over and above what he's doing. So this is extra, just extra compensation for you correcting and doing things in the office that you would have, you have to do. Yeah, because right now he's remote, he can do. And, but I've been doing it for a while. Okay, but it's part of your job. Can you? It's not part of my job because it is a it's it is what, a, what we have is, been outsourcing to do. Yes, but it's part of what the assessor is responsible. I'm responsible for everything. Oh, then, then I, I, but I don't do the database. That's part of your job. I, I don't do the, the network stuff. I'm responsible for it all. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Then it's but I don't do the work. That's part of your job. Yeah. But let me just say this though, like, like you said, next time when we come around to Compensation, and I wish you would really y'all consider that because I don't think y'all considered it this last time that the increase in the work that is occurring in that office does merit an increase. I did ask for an increase last time. I know you said I, I understood that was the pay, but I certainly did ask very, very vehemently no, no, for an increase because I'm aware that some of y'all may not be aware what the, of the workload increase in the office because some of you haven't even been there since we've been in okay. the office. Yeah, I haven't been. Okay, but but this is my concern. Are we spending the dollars wisely? Okay, you're there, and I don't expect you to be there every day. Okay, but you're ultimately responsible for everything that takes place there. Okay, you have a deputy, and you got at least five other people. So my question is, other than you, does everybody else have a job description? Because if they don't, then maybe you need to address that issue, which is your employees, so somebody can take on that work and do it to your satisfaction. Maybe you might have to train them for a week or so. But it should be done. But this particular thing, you know, you're right, that could be the solution. But again, I, I was addressing the fact that the whole workload of the assessor has tripled since the last time there was but a meeting. She got staff there. The workload, I'm not talking about the work for the, the staff, I'm talking about the responsibility and the workload for the assessor. When you don't have a database before, you didn't have to worry about if anything's right with the database. When you didn't have a website, you didn't have to worry about or address any issues. You didn't have to do that. Okay, so I'm just saying the whole 
it, uh, uh, activity for the assessor has expanded just like even having more employees has expanded the responsibility of the assessor. I'm sure you heard the old adage that you work smarter, not harder. Okay, a true professional, you make it happen. Right, okay, I'm just asking, I'm just putting it out there that you all need to consider when the next time that there's a, a salary consideration that these responsibilities have increased in this, in this office triple from when the last time there was an increase. That's all I'm saying. Okay, there's a question on the, to, uh, there's a motion that we deny payment of this uh, uh, bill. Is there any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Brown. Present. Trustee Burke. Yes. Present. Yes. Trustee Young. Yes. Who will have that one? Yes. Okay, we are not going to pay that bill for the business uh, that was on the All right, moving on, we have, um, this was just something that I was trying to find a fair way because Sam was being so adverse to uh, using our attorney. Um, so I was just trying to have a discussion only, uh, maybe possible amendment to uh, our policy. I, and, then, and basically we were saying that the only exception would be where the assessor, as it applies solely to the assessment of field hearing, not the part or portion of the office, if the occasion arises, the assessor may use the advice of presence of an attorney in regards to the hearing process, the assessor may consult the township attorney or attorney of choice known to excel in township assessment law. And, um, um, you know, as I said, it was just for discussion. I'm not certain I even agree with doing this, but I wanted to uh, bring up the option in case anybody else thought that I uh, was being unfair the last time. And uh, so this was just uh, something to try to uh, to see if we wanted to discuss anything different. Is there any discussion on this? I just have one question on the part where you said that it would be restricted to the amount that's in that line item budget, it kind of supersedes even being able to transfer funds in there if, if needed. Well, that's a no. Okay. That's a no. All right. So it's not restricted to that no. amount. No. But you're restricted to your budget as a whole. You can only yeah, I understand that, right. but I'm just saying you know, it seems like when you was restricted to that line item. We're going to transfer within 10 percent. But I myself was questioning that we even need this because we now understand that we do have to use the township attorney alone. So I'm not even certain that this is a necessary clause. And that's where I stand. We don't need we don't need it because we made it very clear the same as agreed on all legal problems, <coughs> legal issues. Oh, legal just communications we want to attorney Joseph Smith. But you know, it doesn't hurt to have a document. Have what document? That that just what you just said. It yeah. is clear. It, you is, clear. it is clear. It's in our policy. Okay. It's in our, our policy is always very clear, right? The ordinance. The ordinance is very clear. It, it is. Right. Well, she's very talking clear. about the additional information. No, but I'm saying that it's very clear. You can just say that London is very clear. And our, right. our policy our ordinance is very clear that she is and all officials use the township attorney, no other attorney. And if they want to use another attorney, they have to come to the board and request to use another attorney. You just can't go out and buy one. And also, they, you know, they can't just, you, uh, the assessor is not, does, cannot sign contracts, only the board can authorize contracts, and that's un, un, unknown. Okay, so just for, just for clarity for me, so in the case when, I, when it's appeal time, um, and I come to the board and say, you know, or, you know, because I don't know what your activity is during appeal time either. You have but, to contact Joe first. Well. Joe, your contact point. Oh, okay, so I don't need to come to the board. No, I mean, if you're talking about a hearing and you've got a, you need a lawyer at a hearing process or an opinion on something. No, I, I, what I need, I don't need the lawyer at the, at the appeal, because I said that before, I don't need the lawyer to be the assessor. It's sometimes like, uh, for instance, we had um, some, a lot of legal documents that were sent to us for like a Thornwood house, for instance. They had a new owner, um, they, were, they were still appealing for a reduction because it was low housing. And they had this document like this. I would need the attorney to help review stuff like that and let me know what leeway do I have as an assessor. 
I don't need the attorney to be my representative at the appeals. I don't understand that. You send that to Jill. Call him up on the phone. Tell him. It's what I would do. Call him up on the phone. I got some paper on it. It's in the mail. Right. So, so I'm saying, so that's what I need to. I just go to him. I don't need to come to the board. You know, I, I even think it's some clarity. I mean, what the referral process in the Sandra works I just want an example here of, of our school board. We have a policy in our school board that basically says that the superintendent or his designee could communicate with the attorney or the president. And if there was a member they needed to contact the attorney for any reason, that member needs approval from the board. Mm -hmm. So yes. that's what I think. I don't know if Sandra is saying that. Right? She can talk to the attorney without, without approval. Can okay. either one of us talk no, no, to the no, attorney? The board has already given Sandra approval to talk to Jim okay. Snoop. We've already done it. But so now, any board member that has something for Joe has to come through the supervisor because I'm the one that asked the questions for the board. Yeah, you see? That's, that's, because for the simple fact, as you said, we don't want everybody and their brother calling up the attorney but, and, and, and spending need, hours and hours of time. So, it's, so I we think, something to, to, I think to, we've to, had to something in the past okay. written on that. And we will look at that. Yeah. Yeah. But, to but, but for me, I can go to. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right on that point. I mean, I'm looking at section three of this ordinance, mm -hmm. uh, which says the township attorney is appointed by the supervisor in place of the consent of the township board, pursuant to law, shall serve as legal counsel for the township board, the township supervisor, the township clerk, the township assessor, the mm -hmm. local district commissioner, and all other township officials in the official capacity of each, except in the case of any genuine conflict of interest or is temporarily designated by the supervisor with the advice and consent of the town board. I mean, it, it is different than what you're talking about with yeah. the school district because there's nothing here that says that or restricts any of those officers from talking, from talking to you. No. Because yeah. no, it's, it's specifically saying yeah. that I represent you. And, and, and in reality, as we so, talk to you, you can charge. That's right. Yeah, I can but tell you for an hour, ask you something, write you something now, you know. You it has never been a strict policy that I know of, but it has been a courtesy that we've always said that if you need anything, then you ask me and I ask Joe. And and that has occurred. That you know has occurred. That's how it works. That's all I'm saying. I was fine with that until we, you know, we try to get clarification. And the only thing we've done now is right now they yeah. said that, you know, that since Saturday we're talking is, about policy, since we're talking about striction, you know, getting things to the point, I think we may need to revisit that. Now you said, you know, Sandra can go and talk to the attorney and that's right. whenever she deemed necessary. Yeah. I want her to have a legal service. She believes she needs legal service. Mm -hmm. Whatever referral process, attorney Sanugo and assessor her comes together, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. Just as long as it follows the guidance that we have. I'm not saying that. I don't have a problem with okay. that. Either, but I'm saying, how far does the scope entail? Well, I guess with that, that depends upon. I guess that with depends upon what she identifies as legal wrong. No, I'm just saying with the with the remaining of the elected officials, with, as respect to our. I'm a commissioner, and if he has a problem, he contacts Joe directly. And Bobby has a question, he contacts Joe directly. Yeah. And I, as basically, speak for the board. So if the problem that comes up. Then you tell me to speak. But that's not what it says. Yeah. I had an issue. But that's a couple months ago. That's, and I approached Donna Williams right. and asked and, her. But that's, 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 that's past precedent. All I'm saying, do we follow past precedent or do we, you know, I, I might not, for whatever reason, right. James, I may not say, you know what, no, I want to talk to Joe myself. Am I wrong? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. I do. But if you talk like you do all the time, for a long time, and we get billed for four hours, no. No. Cut! I say comes out to town, and it comes out to the budget. See, I called him right before the board. So. <laughs> 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 we didn't get no bill. Joe is on the car. All right, let's, 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 car. All right. let's, we're talking about this policy. Then, um, it is for discussion, and so James, you're saying that you just—it's not really necessary. No, it's not necessary. We've already made the uh, we've already made the uh, the decision that is, you know, she contacts. That we're not going to go any further with this. And also, the provision is in there that if a conflict—not a conflict, but if 
if uh, she is not satisfied, then she can come to the board and we can make further decisions, and that is in the policy. So well, that's just, uh, Debbie, did you have anything on this at all? I just thought if you just, we just throw away. All right, that's just there for discussion. Okay. Um, okay, I did have one other issue. Did you receive, everybody received the newsletters? I did not receive my newsletter. James says he didn't receive his newsletter again. They went out the first uh, part of this month. Do you know if you got your newsletter from? Mm -hmm. We did. Moni always seems to get the newsletter. Mm -hmm. You did not get yours either? Okay. But usually Moni does, so. Did we ever get any? Well, we got clarification that we would call them. We thought we had it resolved, and the last right. time it worked out fine, you know, we called them ahead of time, and we said, okay, the newsletter's going to be delivered, you know, and the, the postmaster said, okay, fine, I'll make sure they get everything fine. Well, that was and more problems with Park Forest, right? That is Park Forest. And okay, that's the Jenny said she didn't yeah. get hers, so yeah. that's Monique. Right, and I don't know if, who else is Monique, anybody? Monique, you want to Mailbox? No, mailbox. So, um, but it's Park Forest, and if I haven't, he has got it. Willa didn't get hers. I didn't get mine. Bobby, do you remember me? That one, Bobby. I don't think I did not get his. So we're talking. We just spent thousands of dollars in a newsletter that nobody's received. Um, we put a call in again to the post office yesterday, today, the supervisor wasn't available. Today she was not available either, and we talked to somebody else who said that she remembered the newsletter was coming in. But and we told her that it was not a delivery problem, that they had them, it was that they're not getting out to us, apparently. We are going to have to call her again, and I guess tomorrow or Monday I'm going to call the post office. We've had it resolved, and I'm not certain what the option is because that's the way it is. I mean, we have to go through the park for post office to get things delivered, and it's we're spending a lot of money for not getting the communication out that we need to get out. So uh, I'm going to talk to the postmaster general again and uh, see. And if there, I think we're going to have to go up the ladder. It's not going to have to stop at the park forest person. We're going to have to go to whoever her regional supervisor is, because that's the next step. We've worked with whoever it is. We just can't. We can't keep doing it. So I will talk with her again on you know, tomorrow Monday. And uh, let me know because I think we've got some names of some people. Yeah, we have okay. Yeah, if I, I'm going to talk to her again, but if, if we don't have it, I think I'm going to see what she says. And then I may have to give Joe a call and say, hey, we've got to send a letter to the regional supervisor because we just can't keep doing this. It's too much money that we're putting out. And it's the, what we're trying to communicate is so important. I mean, from the assessor's office, from everybody. You know, we just need to get this information out. So, I'm, and I don't know how to do it. It's the United States Post Office. I mean, you know, we, and I don't want to assume, but you know, it's like that. All right, let's go into old business. Um, we've got our worksheets on the table. There is a new set of worksheets, and you notice that I've done a tentative budget where I put in, just because legally we have to post tentative budgets, and I had put in uh, two sets of numbers um, because we had to resolve what we wanted on the standard budget, and now that has changed, so this new set of figures, and it's attached to uh, a copy that will that uh, the secretary has sent over requesting changes. And if you look at her budget, the changes are that um, it's in that last column over. She has requested 87000 and the payroll expenses is going to 91 And then you have to up the um, payroll taxes to, because of that. And then um, the professional fees, she took from 6000 back to 1000 And then the, the she's adding extra to telephone because and then, no, no. and then the um, uh, contingencies uh, for fifteen hundred she's cracking down to a thousand. I'm fine with all changes. Um, it's up to the board. I mean, I, I will have to make the changes on the master. And of course, this tentative budget, of course, is again going to change once I, you know, we get. If and, if and when we ever get final levy figures, and so we can estimate a little bit better.
winter and we get the final figures as of March 31st so we know what our carryover and all of that stuff is going to be. That always, so it all changes, but you know, it's tentative, so. All right, and that's all the changes you wanted, is that correct? Yeah. All right. Um, maybe what we should do though for Sandra is in the um, contingencies, since she is worried about the um, thousand dollars in her professional legal fees I suggest that maybe you do we up the uh, contingencies to at least two thousand and so then the bottom line that her budget would be asking for would be one hundred and seventy one thousand seven hundred would that make it easier that way you have a little leeway in there yes all right that agree with everybody all right, then I will fix that and uh, get that everything reposted, and we will get that taken care of. So. Um, dial ride. The things on the table on dial ride. Um, I took the last bill that was given to us by um, Washington Township. And I started with what we had agreed was our credit on account of December 31st. And then Bob Howard, when he was in there, he had paid back uh, $8,500. So that gave us a credit of $92,309. And then they, what they billed us for the first, second, third quarter came to $24,000. And now that meant we owed $15,000 something. So then we paid them $8,000, and then we gave them another check of $5,000. So we're showing a balance owed of $24,504. This is more than I thought we'd owe them, but it's because they had a cutback in the area aging money. What they got for the last couple months for area aging was much smaller than we got before, so we got a much smaller share. So uh, that's why we still owe them $24,504. So we need to pay them that. And then we estimated from the billing that came from Will County to, I mean, from Pace to Will County. And this is just the total bill of their description of services to Will County. And so it's not a final billing to us yet, but uh, so I've got our, my worksheet on the Will Ride bus service is that in November, December, and January, February, March, um, I've got an estimated for February and March, and that all totals to uh, our share, 50% less because of the grants, would be $16,903.67. We paid $6,500, so we're showing that we will owe them through March 31st a balance of $10,403. And there might fluctuate a few dollars here and there, but I've, we've got to get this paid through March 31st so that none of this is coming into our new budget. So what I'm proposing is that we pay them $10,400 to the Will uh, Ride program, and then we pay off the Washington Township for a total of $24,504, which should be their final total. You know, I'm just looking at these numbers, just doing a quick cost analysis. On average, to say $6,000, if we start that from our fiscal year of April 1st and then April 1st, that's 12 months, it's $72,000. Is that a fair assumption? No, because you're taking, you have to look at just half of that. Okay. So about 36. Budget we budgeted 50,000. 50, because this is low ridership numbers too. Okay. So we have to assume that it's going to grow. And then the costs are higher. And I had a meeting last Friday at uh, Joliet with um, PACE and uh, disabled services and the county people. And we sat down and we discussed that yes, the services are costing more than even uh, Will County thought they would be. Yeah. Because, uh, in fact, quite a bit more. And now, one good thing I learned though is that the buses are not coming out of Joliet, they're coming out of Nelson. We're getting them out of South Cook instead of Joliet. So the, we're paying a little less that way. But, um, you know, they're working because they don't know Will County very well. They're working on the GPS, which doesn't always prove people the fastest way. Um, Wendy has volunteered or offered her services to go there and try 
try to work with their uh, their dispatch center to try to uh, figure out taking better routes for them. Wendy from Wendy Garlitz, who used to be one township person. And so she, you know, she's offered to maybe to save them a little bit of uh, of time. And because we're not you're paying paid by service hours is what you're paying by. I mean, it's all there's a whole formula that's it's far more complicated than, than what it was with with Washington because you're paying by total service hours, which is at the top. Then they added the gas and they added the time and that fuel cost and you know part of the service call center cost and it all adds up. And um, and then we get uh, you know, come down to what that is and then we we, we get the pay. They get about 50% on, on uh, the rides because of the RTD grants. And also, Wendy is also working on trying to see if we can't get a little bit more of the Area 18 money. And uh, I don't know if that will help us or not, but that uh, might help a little bit. No, we've kind of stepped in on new territory with this. <coughs> Definitely. Yeah, and, and is, is there a point that us as a board, you know, further down the road this year, is going to say that, hey, this number is where we are going to stop at. We exceed it, or like we wave, or going to exceed our budget amount that we put the brakes on, or we are not in a position to do that. Uh, I want to provide the service, but by the same token, I don't want to run away from the train here. That's why we have the budget of 50000 um, so, so, so I think that's going to be more than enough for the year. Okay. If it comes to that it's more than that, then mm -hmm. we're going to really have to discuss, as you said, where we're going to curtail. It'll be a matter of curtailing services, where right now we're allowing people to go to, most of them are medical appointments or disabled going to school and jobs. Mm -hmm. But there, we also have the shopping category, okay. so that one day we can go shopping or they can whatever. But right, you know, that's there. But we may end up having to take, yes. in the long run, we have to say, no, it's only medical appointments and it's only the disabled going to job, uh, school and jobs. Okay. So we may have to curtail. I, if right now, I think we're okay. But I think that this is the year that now that we, we'll have to see a full year, it's what real right is. The other thing is this. I'm hearing that Washington Township program is a little shaky, okay? I'm not certain what that means, if that means that in the future that we'll have the picking up in Will County, which are kind of hoping that then eventually we'll get Creek and Will with us, which means then that there'll be more riders and 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 I'm assuming it would be less time, except for the fact that it's hours of service. <laughs> so I'm not certain how they're gonna get the hours of service much less because even though you're adding more riders, uh, you still are there. They're actually, when you look at the sheets that they're giving us, they're taking a, you know, the amount of time it gets there and the amount of time it arrives and, and, and from this destination to this destination and they're really parading it out. So I'm not certain that the cost are going to go down that much, even if you add riders. If we're at Dick with Washington Township, because there's a base I'm filling a bus. Right. And so with the way they feel for pace, is you know they break out everything and it's on you know because you went this far to this far to this far so it's for the mileage of the service and everything now who is our reimbursement agent see we go through will county we pay will county okay. and then will county and uh, we pay them we're paying them 50 percent less will county then uh, has the big checkbook so uh, then they wait until they're fine get all the final billing and then they take that final bill and then they pay um, uh, the pace. Yeah. Pay. And then they also have to submit all the stuff to RTA and they have to do all the paperwork of getting the grant money and all of that. And then So we don't we ourselves do not wait on the grant money? So we just pay fifty percent less of our total bill? We don't pay any of this total bill. We yeah. pay fifty percent oh, less. That's good, that's good. So that's that's, good. that's I mean that's a good thing. It is a good thing because they have the money to affront us, yes. which is what they're doing. That's what they're doing. We're not having to wait. Yes. Now, what we are waiting for longer than normal is that because they're still in the process of understanding the RTA billing and, and the pace billing and everything, mm -hmm. Wendy has yet to actually sit down and send us a true bill for our our months of service. Mm -hmm. You know, 
so she's going through and she's making the things, changes here and there and I don't know what she's doing, but she promises it's all coming. But in the meantime, we have to pay through March 31st. And as I said, these are estimated, uh, estimated for Will and uh, Washington Township. I want to paint this as a final to Washington Township. It, they sent me a bill that didn't quite agree with my numbers because they're so far off the chart. So I went back and used the starting numbers that they had agreed with originally and went through and did all this and came up with what we owe them. And then I'm going to write it as final on the check and it's going to be final. Ten grand. Plus no, the what I need is probably two motions: a motion to pay um, uh, Will County uh, ten thousand four hundred dollars for the Will Ride service, and I need a motion to pay two thousand four hundred fifty dollars and four cents to Washington Township as a final bill for the, their dial ride program. Well, um, I know it's stressful trying to keep up with all the numbers. It's very stressful, I tell you what. I've got to make spreadsheets because I don't know, you know, it's like, oh my God, you know? And, and interpret their data and go to their meetings, so it's been fun. I, I do believe we need to determine our relationship with Washington Township. Yeah, for that. We're no longer providing service. Yeah. Okay, so I move that we allocate and pay, make a final payment of 2,000, to Washington Township for our job or our program. That's, that's my motion. Um, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Brown. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Larger? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. Trustee Brown? Yes. yes. Turn a motion for $10,400 to pay through March 31st to Will uh, County. So we $10,403. Let's just do $400 because, as I said, that's not a final total. That's just an estimated. $10,400. And if it's too much, we'll get a rebate back from next year. Is there a second? Second by Debbie. I, I just the discussion just briefly is that <clears throat> if we could conduct some type of survey at some time through this process, a survey to survey the, the, uh, the customers, so to speak, the, I don't know what you want to call it, the writers. Hey, is there any way we could survey? We could, that's way down the line. I don't know. Yeah, we would we actually have to make a survey and we would have to mail sure. it. So because it's not something that we can do. Put it in the put it online somehow. Right. Let's just look to do Let's wait to do it a little bit down the line. Obviously, yeah. sometimes. We've, got a, we've, we've just actually, as I, one of the problems with our, they've had a few problems. Um, I've had to actually transport seniors to senior events last December, and we've had a few problems with them, and it was just basically because of just many things. But one of the things that was decided at this last meeting is that they, they had in their policy for some reason that they, people could only call in the day ahead of time. And that was causing problems. So now we've changed it so that people can call up to seven days ahead of time. And that's really important for us when we're scheduling our senior events because we have a cutoff on a Friday and Monday. These can send a list in, and we can say this is a list of people that are being picked up at Portland House. And and before when we did the day before, it was like they come back and they say, well, these person was registered. This, this, I mean. You know, and, and they we were saying we want this to be a free ride. We're not they're not paying two dollars or four dollars, it's all on the township. And it was there were a lot of problems. So now we have a voucher thing in place. It's now seven days ahead of time and not instead of sending them to a call center, we're sending them directly to the dispatch so we have the name. So if we do have transportation problems like we've had in the past, we directly call dispatch. We do not call the service number that and then we get told what we look into it. So we, we've now gotten a better way of communication. That's and great. I think it's going to help us with our service, which is why I'm saying, yes, let's take a, a service, but let's wait until maybe the bill's here. Sure. Sure. The only comment I want to make is that I think that every time we build this, a lot of there is a status report in terms of efforts being made to collect monies from the agencies. Like the, uh, 
step will come, RTA, uh, when, as I said, none of these reports are the final reports to us. These are reports from Pace to uh, Will, Will County. But at some point, we need to Yes. No. Okay. Yeah, she knows that, and she's working on that, and she knows I need a final count. And she's, uh, it's, uh, they're, they're trying to get those. Uh, all right, I do I, there's a motion and a second on this. Uh, so I need, for the $10,400, I need a roll call. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. Mr. Roger that? Yes. Um, we're going to go into now the Youth Committee. And the same thing goes with the Youth Committee. Um, uh, we have uh, an estimated billing through March 31st. Um, we did not have the March 16th day, right? They canceled that at the last minute. Yeah, okay. yes, the right. facility, the facility in and of itself is completed, but they had some glitches on the administrative side. So specifically with the police department on site there, giving them their blessing. Okay, but that will be okay for this next week? Yeah, they sent us the copy. They actually sent us back and on I the 23rd. And they signed it. And we changed the dates on that last okay. page because they still showed all the dates. Right, right. I told Willis, she said she beat me to the front right. as usual. Right, we did that. Well, I've already signed it. You signed it, take it over. Right. You can get their signature and bring it back to the county. Right. But in the meantime, then, let's just assume then that the 23rd is going to be okay mm -hmm. and the 30th is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a total of $440 that we're going to owe. Governor State University out of this year's budget. So we need to have a motion to pay that. So a motion to pay Governor State University $440 for our youth program through March 31st. Is there a second? Is there a second? Is a second by James? Any further discussion on that? Roll call vote. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. Do you want that one? Yes. All right. Anything further? Mm -hmm. Not the youth? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, let me just go back with you. <coughs> you know, we had talked about that STEM program, the young lady. Yes. Uh, and we said there's really much we could not do here for the township, but I did meet with Terry and the young lady actually at the school and we talked about it. So we're looking to embrace the concept of the school. So we may be asking coming back and saying, you know, if we can sponsor a child to participate in that program in some manner. So I'll modify it. So the school looks like they may embrace the program and hold the programs on one of the school facility. That's tentative. Okay? So so as far as only township youth program, it may be more of a sponsor child. Just throwing that out. We have to, we'll have to think about that because I believe that they are not a, a four one whatever three agency because they are a for profit. So I don't know. Yeah, we do. It, yeah, we do something. It, 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 don't, yeah. it may not be the sponsor child, but some okay. maybe a support role right. that doesn't entails money. That'd be wonderful. All righty. And um, just going green is ongoing. Um, it's ongoing. Okay. Let's then um, kind of continue getting this signed on this pile. Um, and then we need to have uh, Sandra sign it before she leaves. And um, we'll get David's signature tomorrow on that. Okay. Then next is the trustee on the accounts. And this is the audit of accounts from. Uh, February 21st through March 20th. I'm going to start down there for signatures. Take a bite. Yes. 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 Okay, before we um, uh, go into that, I want to, uh, Joe found out we just pulled the contract. In the contract, it does say utilities, 
It says, um, and who has the washroom facilities are designed to be used in common by tenant and its employees with okay. occupants of other premises. I'm okay. uh, sorry, page 11. Okay. It's under utilities. Um, uh, tenant agrees to share equally with the occupants of the other premises in the expense of laying, maintaining such common expenses as the usual toilet and washroom supplies of paper, soap, and towels. Landlord shall have the right from time to time to assume the obligation of maintaining such a common facility, and if elects to do so, tenants shall pay a proportionate share. That would be that if they would decide to take over cleaning of the whole washroom, then we would pay a share to them to do it. Yeah, it's not a good provision for you. It is. It is. Right. right. That's why I don't so, get much of a response. Um, but the thing is, I would assume, and I don't know that for sure, but I think it's the village should be going back on the um, Will County and and you might want to ask Will County to check their don't they, they don't have a provision. I don't know what they have. Yeah, because they may have a thing that they have to there's it's in there that they have to share. Yeah, because what they told us is that their corporate I don't know if it's if Will County has corporate, but their head office directed them to stop. Okay, but they, you're, they're going to have to check their contract with University Park. And I don't know how you get hold of that. Maybe, maybe Lance Lanier has a copy. Well, Lanier would have to do it because, right. you know, I wouldn't have no authority to go tell them to do so, nothing. So, but uh, since it's a problem, are you going to check then with Lance to see if he will check the contract and then discuss it with them so that before we go to the expense of adding, paying extra money out for a, a maintenance? I will ask, I don't, I don't know how quickly I'll get a response, but I'll ask. Yeah. Really, truthfully. Well, yeah, because they're saying that You've it's... You've already talked to him, and you made his decision, right? Well, no, but now she's saying the new thing is that from what we read in here, really, the tenants have legal responsibility. Right. But if the, if the health department has backed off, now she's saying talk to Lanier about asking them to... Yeah, I understand. Uphold. I understand. He's already told you this is what you get one day a week, right? No, no. He 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 said that's what they would provide, but he I had to ask him, would you remind them if they got a provision like that in their lease that they do have some obligation? How many other tenants are there? Which is two, the, the health department which has the old one side and then the assessor has the old one side. But I would assume that they would have the same type of clause. In yeah, I just don't know what they yeah. have in their country. I don't country. know either. And that would be a whole year to look at. Um, yeah. I mean, I would think before we as a township take full responsibility that they need to be living up to their part of the contract. Yeah, what I'm probably thinking is that, you know, maybe there were some changes to that contract. That's why corporate told the board of health to stop doing what you're doing. No, actually, she just said that they recognize they're trying to cut back on costs. But if there's and a contract in effect that says what our contract says, anything similar to our contract, Right, and we don't know that, so that's why I said the near would have to be advised to, you know, act on that cost. I wouldn't have no authority to go to them and say, where's your contract? Are you holding it up? Oh, there would be no linear. Yeah, there would be no near. Yes, yes sir. Because, yeah, I was going to ask them, glad you found it, because I was, was going to call you and say, could you please read this contract um, and tell me what it's saying? I'm going to read it. Would it help if Joe would address a letter? Mr. Lanier, the village manager at University Park. Uh, what's his name? Lance Lanier? Uh, no, Lafayette. No, Lafayette. 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 L A F A Y E T T E. And Lanier is what? L A N I E R. L A N I E R. L A N I E R. It's not L A N, it's L I N. E R. Okay. I said L A L L I N. But maybe just ask a question as to uh, <laughs> what they do with their contracts because you know right now the the uh, health department, the Will County Health Department, is just they're no longer taking the share of cleaning the bathrooms right. and, and well, uh, I'm just thinking you know, you know, maybe if you end up if you end up uh, contracting to pay the extra, you know, if they've got the same provision, you know, send the uh, some health department bill. I mean, it says it's supposed to share. Right, they're supposed to share, so yeah, that would be good. Yeah, All right. I have to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to send the bill. Are we going to do this simultaneously or is? We will leave this in Joe's hands. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Let's have a motion to approve the uh, audit of account for February 21st to 320. I motion that we approve the audit account from February 1st through 320, 2014. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Debbie. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Trustee Brown. Yes. Trustee Burgess. Yes. Trustee Young. Yes. Supervisor Nathan. Yes. Okay. Board comments. Can we get a raise? Yeah. Um. You say you're 56 cents at the end. 57 cents. <laughs> no, it dropped down. It dropped down. Once a year, they reconcile that. They reconcile that. Board comments. Any fun? You know, I've been I've been trying to uh, research uh, in the past couple of years with funds in the bill. Will County uh, authorized funding for teenagers to be employed in, so so in, the, in the community. Huh? So yeah, the summer youth program. I'm not certain if, they, if CETA is doing that this year. Um, my intention was to call them, I just haven't gotten out of the bill. In but the past, it was done through the Will County Workforce. Workforce? Yeah. Can you can you look into that? Yeah, because I normally they call me if they have a problem, but I will okay. follow them because yeah. I've had several uh, residents to yeah. call about that. So. Yeah, and, and what it is, if you look the program down, they will uh, send teenagers down. We can have our choice uh, who we want, but they pay the bill, they pay the salary, all we do is service and work site for them. Mm -hmm. that, they say we wouldn't have anything for them to do that would have to work through David. If we can employ one or two, uh, all we have to do is provide them with the experience. The county will pay the bill. I yeah. can use some help too in the summer. Right. And that um, Sandra does have yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah. If, if the program is still in existence, mm -hmm. see, we had it at the library at University Park. But what we happened? Two two the yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. They lost the funding. So every year you have to call them up and ask them if they, yeah. you know, what funding they have for doing this. But uh, it will be a good local gesture. If we can employ, if not one or two, within the township, and give them some real life work experience, and have the county pay the bill. Well, we'll check it out, and then uh, let uh, David and Sandra know. I can't add to that that I know because I'm on the uh, University Park uh, Finance Committee. They did have some last summer for University Park mm -hmm. that the, the county paid for. Yeah, good. Yes. But you're right, you have to check to see if they got one. We did it one year, July, and we was able to report two Yeah. Did we get that uh, policy back? Signed policy? No. Is it? I have it right here. Have you signed it to sign it? I signed it. Yeah, I signed it. Should I write it on the township for County? Yeah, I thought that was written in there. It's not, it wasn't typed in? No, it just said township. I'm sorry, we need to. Right have it written in them because it, I thought it was typed in, sorry. All right, any other board comments? Seeing none, I will, if there's none, that's, I will take a motion to adjourn. Can I ask a question about the dialogue around for you adjourn? So is that going to be immediate, the action there? And do we have something that will be replacing it or do you have No, we always have it. It's not called dial ride anymore. It's called will ride. Will ride. Um, we have some brochures on it that are the old, and actually every board member should be given one of those uh, will ones instead of put that in the packet. Um, it's, uh, it's the will ride services. Uh, we, we changed from dial ride as of last November 1st. Okay. And so we've been will ride since then. But is that the Washington Township? Washington Township is dial right. We've no longer done okay, so that Washington since November 1st. Oh, okay. Creek does they walk yeah. to Washington. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, we have we have information we've been giving people that's out of date, so we need that. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, they came up with a nice brochure on that. All right, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Roll call vote, please. Are you always start with me? I said it last week. Okay. All right. Check the
Yes. yes. <laughs> Stop. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. Who was that Yes. Third board says. Yes. What? <laughs> I tried to do some humor. I'm I'm probably probably Are you still, are you still